Hello, everybody. Welcome to Deep Fat Fried. So, last night I had Scotty and Paul send me uh, five people they admire. Uh, no, now, that's not how it was presented, number one. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it Send was. me the five most influential people in your life. Something that's like what that. it was. I said... Uh, the five most influential figures in your life. I said, yeah, people that either... Uh, I'll well, read the goddamn text. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead and read it. I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it. Go ahead and read it. Hey, I need you guys to send me a list of your top five most admired, influential people in your lives See, for tomorrow's I used, episode. I said, it, I said admired as well. You st- <laughs> I did. Anyway, so- the, reason, <laughs> the, the reason I'm already a gigantic pillar of salt is because me and Scotty tried to figure it. And I believe, and Scotty can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is going to be our fifth Com- competitive episode in a row. Now, see, so, that, that's where you're no, wrong. No, no, no. Because let's, no, let's go back. Let's go back. Okay. Let, you want me to walk you through it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We did the competition. Well, no, I'm, I'm denying that this is a competitive episode. It is, is literally a bracket. Yes. But, you know, uh, there's not going to be much of a chance for uh, favoritism here. I mean, there might be a little bit of somebody trying to champion their their guy, but the main reason I wanted to be comprised of people we admire is so that we all have a vested interest in this. But really, like the nature of these contests is going to preclude people making sort of ridiculous uh, arguments of how this person would would win in this instance and stuff. Um, all right. So TJ. these are not all right, TJ. So you might wonder, uh, you know, how are these people going to be pitted against each other? Yeah, uh, and uh, that's. That's the fun part, because you don't know. You know, uh, there is a, a page here that I have loaded up with random ways in which these two people could come into competition. Oh, boy. Some of them intellectual, some of them physical, some of them concerning other attributes entirely. But, I, oh, okay, so also, I, I needed 16 slots filled, so I figured each of us would pick five and then I would pick like the most admired person in America, give the American people a chance to, uh, to contribute. And that would have been Barack Obama, by the way, or Trump. They're actually, they're actually, uh, Trump and Obama are actually tied uh, at this point, uh, for that position, sadly, but Trump, uh, but, uh, Donald that do we need to, can you imagine? I thought about shoving Donald Trump in here or something, but uh, then what happened was Scotty actually overlapped with two of my names. So I had three empty slots. So I just threw the three of us in there. Oh, damn. damn. No overlap with Paul, though. Nope. Paul's your Paul. Yours were totally unique. There was no overlap between you and anybody else. But me and Scotty had some overlap uh, with George Carlin and Marilyn Manson. So let me go over who's on this list really quick. Uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. That was one of mine. <laughs> German philosopher. Um, a lot of people say that he founded uh, existentialism. I don't think he ever described his own philosophy as that. But, uh, you know, uh, then there's Paul. Mm-hmm. Good old Paul, uh, oh, that's Akira me. Kurosawa. That's one of Scotty's. Uh, we've done ep- we've done an episode on Akira Kurosawa, so you guys should yeah. know who that is. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <clears throat> Everybody knows who Arnold Schwarzenegger. And that's another one of who, Scotty's. Whose pick was that? That was a Scotty pick. pick. That was a Scotty pick. Scotty loves Arnold. Voted for him uh, at least once. I love Scotty too. You should love me, Scotty. What is best in life? Cross your enemies, see them jump before you, and hear the lamentation of the women. That is good. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Scotty himself is in there. Probably won't get very yeah. far, but you know. <laughs> Probably won't get far. Probably won't get anywhere. You got, uh, actually, the nature of these contests is we could actually advance in these. One of us could actually win this, believe it or not. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock, another one of uh, Scotty's picks. Or no, no that was Paul's a, pick. Paul I'm sorry. Pick. I'm sorry. That's a Paul pick. Yeah, um, what the hell? <laughs> I can't remember what everyone said. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock, of course. I mean, you know who the fucking Alfred Hitchcock is. Uh, Kurt Cobain, another Paul pick. Fred Rogers, another Paul pick. Uh, like this, all, it, I randomized. Oh, I, guess I randomized. I randomized this, but I guess it liked to clump all of yours together, Paul. Fred Rogers, Mister Rogers, fame. Uh, Derek Jensen, probably a lesser known name on the <laughs> probably list. Probably the least known name on this list, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a radical environmentalist. I'll let Paul explain a little bit about who that is when we actually get to him. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. That was one of Scotty's, I believe. Yes. Um, me. 
I'm thinking I'm going to win it. Uh, Stephen King, one of my picks. John Carpenter, also one of my picks. We did an episode on him and uh, Wes Craven not too long ago. Uh, George Carlin and Marilyn Manson, who me and Scotty both uh, agreed on. That was our overlapping uh, people. And then Slick Rick, old school rapper that Paul. Uh, the, gr- the, the greatest old school rapper, dude. Yes. <clears throat> MC Ricky D. And uh, I don't really know much about Slick Rick, but I'm sure I'll That's learn a, a little bit as we go. That's a shame. Shame. <clears throat> I mean, to really know anything about Slick Rick, you got to look at him. So I hope you got some pictures <laughs> and shit. Yeah, I mean, I could put up pictures of anybody we need to. Um, Didn't even pull pictures of the people that are going to be fighting. Another fucking missed opportunity, TJ. Missed opportunity. But Another I'll- slipshod, slapped together episode by yours truly, TJ. Everybody's favorite deep fat fryer. Here I, we can, go. Uh, I can put up Slick Rick, though. People need to see who that is. How convenient, TJ. How convenient. Yeah, this is uh, so what Slick Rick look like. That's right. Oh, man, dude. He was like, back in the day, the freshest of the fresh. He started the whole, like, wearing all these Gumby gold chains and shit. Yeah, dude. It's the only have enough gold him. chains, right? You know, it's, like, difficult to move your neck. Yeah. That's how you know you're doing it right. Oh, yeah. Slicky Ricky right there, buddy. Um. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's get started. So this in this uh, this tournament of personal heroes, this tournament of influential figures within all of our lives, this tournament of our most admired people. You know what I noticed missing from this list, by the way? What women? Oh, you guys have ignored half of the population. Congratulations, you're sexist. Damn, what a bunch Fuck of sexist him. pigs. Yeah. Pretty disgusting, guys. Pretty fucking gross. But whatever. Also, none of us notice none of us picked our moms. Yeah. Well, I didn't want anyone. We're, to, I didn't want anyone to pick <laughs> dumb. We're, we're, fucking we're shit bad like sons, though. Yeah, that's true. And we could have fucking Damn, solved dude. it both right there. We could have fucking solved the female uh, problem, and we could have solved the, uh, well, you know, the bad son problem at the same time. Right. Anyway, who cares? Um, So, first of all, it's going to be Paul versus Nietzsche. (laughs) Oh, boy. By the way, this is a double elimination contest. Oh, you might get lucky, Paul. You might get get something. You might compete in a way. Because this contest is not even remotely fair. It's just totally random bullshit. Like, you might fucking... um, Watch it. Watch we'll Watch I roll a mustache competition or something against Nietzsche. Well, you're gonna lose that for sure. That's what I mean. You're fucked. fucked. Then. All right. Well, let's see how you're gonna be fucking competing against the great German philosopher. Right, fuck. Let's see it. Which one would create the better ice cream flavor? <laughs> All right. Well, I win. See. See, Paul. Nietzsche, Nietzsche would create a, a flavor that tasted like human misery and tears. <laughs> And there would be nougat, caramel, and, uh, you know, chocolatey ribbons inside of mine. Maybe some uh, Reese's pieces kind of sprinkled in there. Yeah. I think that Nietzsche's would just be called, like, the abyss, and you just open the carton and there's nothing in it, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Or just, just like, the infinite void. It just, like, (laughs) sinks into infinity, like, oh! Oh, dude. Nietzsche was also on the side of famous chocolatier, TJ. Oh, really? Yeah. Of course. Everyone knows that. I didn't know that. He, he probably made, he probably back in the day made delicious ice cream TJ before ice cream was even a popularized thing. He was I mean, making I, some of the fucking I, best flavors like void, what you ever void cream TJ? Oh yeah, void cream yeah. yeah. Abyss cream. Uh, the, the, there's there's the abyss flavors. There's fighting with monsters fudge. You yeah, know, oh, like yeah, fighting fighting with monsters Come fudge. On, TJ. <laughs> Eternally recurring chocolate. <laughs> 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 uh, no, I think Paul wins this one, man. I mean, I think I win this one just by virtue of the fact that I was born in a century where we have access to actual crazy flavors for ice cream. And like shit. I said, though, like he probably would have been like, what would be, you know, what would be best is to infuse some ice cream with blueberry or something. You know what I mean? And I'll <laughs> like, blueberry. Get the fuck out of the way, idiot. Here's some nougat. Here's some peanut butter. Yeah, I think that uh, Nietzsche loses by virtue of uh, being born in the wrong time and also wrong not being time, a fat dude. ass. Yeah, he wasn't a fat ass, so he wouldn't have appreciated ice cream as much as me. I don't think there's a contest here. 
So Paul, Fuck it, hey. I you, never thought I'd beat Frederick Nietzsche. You did game. though. That's why this is so. Yeah. This is that's why this is so nice. Fuck it, I'm going all the way. I'm going. I'm going all the way. Paul's going you know, to the end. I, I, I love how one like the beginning. Paul's like it's bullshit. Paul beats Nietzsche and is all like, oh, you know what? This is great. <laughs> I'm all in. I'm all in on this one. This is a great episode. <laughs> Paul defeats the uh, <laughs> the great German philosopher and cultural critic and. And he's just like, yeah, I win. I'm better than I'm Nietzsche. A fat glutton. Better than Nietzsche you know at say, fucking Paul, ice cream. Not, that which does not kill you only makes you stronger. All right. All right. <laughs> Next round. Kurosawa versus Schwarzenegger. These are two oh, of Scotty's man, I hope picks. It's not a physical thing because Kurosawa is going to get crushed. Then there are a few physical ones, and I'm pretty sure that if we get one of those, Arnold just wins. But we'll see. I mean, it, hey, it could be a tiny dick contest or something. Yeah. <laughs> He could, he could win. He could be. Let's see. Which one would you rather be stuck in an elevator with? Hmm. Damn. I mean, you're going to have a way more interesting conversation with Kurosawa, assuming that he can speak enough English. That's true. I mean, so he's these, just, are, these are two both yeah. both two guys who have kind of like broken English, probably. Right. I don't. Yeah. I think Kurosawa spoke very little English, though. Yeah. So. This is tough. So you can an English speaker. If because, you if you if Kurosawa spoke fluent English, I think it'd be like way easier to be like, OK, Kurosawa. Oh, yeah, because you'd have a way more interest. Well, I don't know, though. But Arnold but Arnold can be interesting. But I think I feel like Arnold might in a large enough dose kind of start to be like, all right, Arnold, shut the fuck up, please. You know what? Uh, we're thinking about this wrong, too. You are little baby girl. You, know, like, you would have you would have two different kinds of conversations with Akira Kurosawa and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Very true. Arnold Schwarzenegger like, might kind of fall into that more like buddy kind of. Right. Role. Yeah, well, like just like. For me, the first thing I would ask Schwarzenegger is like, what's it like to be able to get any pussy you want in the world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wouldn't ask that of Kurosawa. You know, he's probably got he's probably gotten his fair share just for being Kurosawa. But that's not what you want to hear Kurosawa talk about. But I want to hear about Schwarzenegger's exploits. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Schwarzenegger definitely has had some adventures. If you ever watch a if you ever watch a, a DVD, if you ever have the opportunity to watch Schwarzenegger do commentary on a DVD or something. Yeah, one hundred percent. Do that. It's, it's, it's pretty hilarious. It's dude. fucking his DVD commentaries are fucking unintentionally hilarious because all he does is he just describes what's going on in the movie, but he always talks about it as if it's happening to like literally him and not his character. You know what I mean? Right. Like he'll sit there and be like, and then in this scene, I kill my wife because she is a bitch. You know? Like, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> great. It's fucking awesome. Um. Well, well, also Arnold had all those fucking pranks he pulled on people during like movies and making a movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I would ask him too. I'd be like, Arnold, what are some other wrong advices that you gave? You know what I mean? Because I love, I love that from uh, Pumping Iron. I love that wrong advices. Uh, I clip. think, I think, I, I think I see where this is going though, huh? I yeah, I mean, I, I honestly think that the language barrier kills this one, because if Kurosawa sp- spoke fluent uh, English or I spoke fluent Japanese, then he would probably be the more interesting brain to pick. But and that Schwarzenegger means, is Schwarzenegger, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Paul, Crazy. that means Paul is going on to face Arnold. I knew it. I in the knew next round. Fucked. Oh, now, shit, Now, this Paul. is a double elimination contest. So Nietzsche and Kurosawa are not out of the running yet. I figured because the rules are so unfair. That everyone should at least get two chances. So the next one is Scotty versus Alfred fucking Hitchcock. I got this in the bag, dude. You feel like you got this? Better hope this isn't a jowl yeah, comp- if, if uh, competition. If it's oh, direct it, it, movie, then I'm fucked. But if it's beyond anything beyond that, I think I got it, man. It might be. Let's jowl find size. out. A bitch boy slap fight. I got this, dude. I mean, yeah, I think uh, I, I don't think got this, dude. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock, he was big and fat and slow. I mean, he might be able to throw a bitch slap pretty good, but I think Scotty's just gonna open. I ain't him. sweating fucking Alfred in a bitch boy slap fight. Hell no, dude. That's like me and my element, dude. I think I think uh, Alfred Hitchcock would kind of be like a a lazy, um, <sighs> fucking like uh, orangutan, and Scotty yeah. be like a fucking crazy fucking baboon, you know, spider monkey. Yeah, just like. Ooh! <laughs> you know, yeah. but I don't know, man. Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, he had some weight behind him. Maybe if he got one good slap in, he could fucking knock Scotty down. Oh man, dude, he's way too slow. 
There's no I fucking mean, way. Well, I mean, like, are you thinking about him as an old man? Because, like, you know, he wasn't an old man his whole life, you know? Dude, Alfred right. Hitchcock, his whole, like, at any point in his life, and I've looked at photos of him when he was young and shit, when he first started directing, he's always been a fat tub of shit. Yeah, and he was... He, he always was. He was 5'7", too, so it's not like he had, like, a height thing going on. So, and, Scotty's probably got the reach advantage, I the got height, height advantage. I got reach. He's got... Uh, and, like, Hitchcock also has that sort of, like... Like, some fat people, you kind of tell there's some, like power behind the fat kind of thing you know what i mean but hitchcock he, just looks like he just looks like the really like a very doughy kind of guy that's just like he real does. like I mean, also, I, and saggy and sad you know i don't oh, think hitchcock oh, would oh, would uh yeah. i don't think hitchcock would be as interested in the premise as scotty like he would probably look at it as beneath him to engage in a bitch boy slap fight and scotty's ready to bitch boy slap fight and like anytime any you know anybody that steps to scotty and wants to bitch boy slap fight slap fight. i think scotty's got to win this one honestly scotty Damn, dude. so far uh all of us have advanced i don't know if i'm gonna be able to beat stephen king in whatever our contest is though <laughs> a writer's uh comparison <laughs> yeah something like that uh who can write the most novels in one year uh-oh whoops <laughs> Uh, so Kurt Cobain <coughs> versus Fred Rogers. Similar, um, damn, dude. similar aesthetics here. You know what I mean? Like, like dressing wise, they both liked pullover sweaters. Yeah, they both did like pullover sweaters. That's a good point. You know, I feel bad voting against Mr. Rogers though. They so. they both were very important to children. Both yeah. influenced the a generation people. of young people. That's true. That's what the category is here, TJ. Let's see how they're going to compete. A timed blade making competition a la Forged and Fire that they have two weeks to prepare for. Hmm. I'm gonna have to go with fucking Fred Rogers, dude. I'll tell you <laughs> why. I think he'd actually prepare like methodically and be like, I'm going to make this blade. I don't think Kirk Cobain would give a flying fuck about the contest and just show up with probably like a fucking like Well, we're gonna assume that everyone's gonna try their best in these. Uh, that's hard to assume with Kirk Cobain. That is know, true. Like, he might just be like, This is pointless. <laughs> Yeah, like, he, I mean, he destroy his forge or something in protest, dude. He, he was edgy though. Cobain was, you know, the king of edge at the time he was popular. Yeah, Paul, true. imagine Kurt Cobain though, like forging a weapon. Like maybe if it was like if if, if that was something he was super interested in. But I think it's more likely. I mean, let's remember too. Forge. I think we need to remember too. I know that Mister Rogers, you know, was was artistic as well. But Kurt Cobain was like a real like true blue kind of artist guy and uh, you know a lot of these guys that are into uh, bladesmithing are uh, consider themselves artists and stuff so you know sure. Kurt Cobain might fucking kind of resonate with the artistic side of uh, of blade I guess it's making possible. It's possible. <laughs> I also think that like while well, Bolton neither of these guys extolled the virtues of violence I think that Fred Rogers is more inherently pacifistic than Kurt would be right because I mean Kurt did have true. Kurt did have a bunch of guns I mean he was a he was a gun loving right. man well, I mean, yeah, he was paranoid as fuck. Right. So, I mean, like, he might actually get into the knife-making thing because of that, too. Like, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. be able to make my own weapons. That's true. And Fred and, might feel this, like, weight of guilt that he's creating something that might kill someone, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's like, he and is Kurt, a goody, goody. Kurt, of course, like, he, know, might, he might feel the same way, too, but that feeling would probably be numbed by heroin while he was working on it. You <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like maybe heroin is a factor too, though. Would he be no, too? Totally would he is. be too strung out to make a fucking knife? Yeah, that's true, man. He might start working on it. Might actually look good. Then he fucking does some H, and then he's mm. fucking passed out. He's got the. I nod. mean, I'm telling you, dude. Kurt Cobain was a junkie, so he was able to do some H and then go out and play shows that people remember as the most epic fucking. So, so it's like he could he could do some heroin and remain functional. Yeah, or function functual functual functual. Uh, Whereas, you know, Fred Rogers, yeah, he's going to be going at this soberly, but he's going to be having these, you know, uh, moral quandaries with what he's doing. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I do think that Fred Rogers was probably a handier person than Kurt Cobain was, like in terms of being able to like fix a leak in his house or something. Probably. That's an that's an assumption, but I've never heard any stories about Kurt Cobain. Being, I mean, like, some of these we're just going to have to go with our gut instincts about these these people. So. Yeah, so you know, I I think honestly, I'm gonna have to give Fred Rogers the edge on this one, no pun intended, because I think that he's gonna be more methodical about going about uh, making the blade, and I think that there's a good chance he was probably better with his hands, like could fix things. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I mean, he, didn't he make a lot of his own puppets, or did someone else make? He those? did, and he uh, did. yeah, and and, and the sets for them, and 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 he came from an era where that was uh, way more important for people to know how to build things and shit. Where Kurt was able to just kind of, you know, yeah, I think that uh, I think you guys are, I think you're right, Paul. I think uh, I think Fred Rogers has to take this one. Yeah, I have to agree with uh, that. But I don't think I think Kurt would have done respectably. I mean, yeah. I think you would just would have said fuck the competition. All right, so uh, Derek Jensen. Let's. Uh, why don't you explain to us who Derek Jensen is, Paul? I'll pull up a picture of him while you're doing it. <coughs> Excuse if me. Paul even can explain his philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Derek Derek Jensen is a radical uh, eco terrorist slash philosopher. Um, believes that all technology should be destroyed and that humans should return to a, a migrant and tribal kind of nature. Um, he's known as rewilding, I guess, uh, in some circles, this idea that uh, we need to tear society down and replace it with something like the Lakota Indians had, um, you know, uh, he's uh, more on the philosophy side of things, but he's part of an organization that, uh, has you know underground organizations that actively try and blow up dams and shit. He's definitely the type of guy that will immediately make the argument that if a dam is fucking up a river, that you should sneak in there like a fucking you know ninja or whatever with a bunch of dynamite and blow the fucking dam up because the river is more important than the dam. So, um, he's written a bunch of books, gives a bunch of talks. He's a very eloquent speaker. Um, makes a lot of really good points about civilization and the evils of it, and he's my favorite living philosopher. So uh, along with that damn stuff, I'm looking up a quote of his. He says, every morning when I awake, I ask myself whether I should write <clears throat> or blow up a dam. I tell myself I should keep writing, though I'm not sure that's right. Right. So he's the, he's this type of guy that, you know, I don't know that he himself would go blow up a dam, but he's definitely trying to incite people to do so. Openly right. and he's like uh, a very radical. He's like a radical yeah. environmentalist. Yeah, I, I looked. I looked him up because I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" And, um, the first thing I read about him was that like he believes that uh, basically in the abolition of human civilization and no human civilization is sustainable. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, and he's going to be facing off gotcha. against Quentin Tarantino, who I think everyone knows who that is. And let's go ahead and see how they're going to compete. A staring contest. Oh shit, dude! Hmm. This is tough because both of these guys have kind of like. Yeah, they have kind of similar personalities too, honestly. Like they both have the same kind of like quiet, measured, slow way of speaking, as far as I can tell. Hmm. And Quentin, I think he, that's well, tough. Tarantino is way jitterier than Derek, Derek Jensen is. Derek Jensen does these uh, three and a half, four hour talks where he sits Indian style on a stage and just doesn't move. And I think that fucking. I don't know, dude. I think Tarantino would have a hard time sitting still for that long. Yeah, he is a little yeah, bit. It, it depends what kind of staring contest. Yeah, obviously if it's sitting down, but like, what if they have to stand up though? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I the fidgetiness because, like, you know, I've watched a lot of Jensen, and he's definitely not one of these dudes that's constantly stalking the stage or moving or shifting his eyes around. He's very slow very focused he usually just kind of plants in one spot he didn't blink he, he's he's given hostile like talks where there were people in the audience that were against his ideology with horns and shit trying to trying to get him to fucking quit talking you know what i mean and he just kind of calmly gives the talk and ignores them which i don't know if tarantino like that's is tarantino as good at ignoring annoyance I don't well, know I mean, about that. I think I think Quentin Tarantino tends to respond to annoyance. Contest. Well, yeah, but that's the thing. That's what comes into play in a staring contest. Who gets annoyed? Who gets fidgety first? Who, you know, what if gets Derek a, Jensen has dry eyes. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, but you <laughs> could say the same. Know. You could say the same about Quentin Tarantino. I'm trying. I'm trying to look at things about their personality that would make them better at a staring contest. You know. Hmm. And like I mean, Tarantino, like, I don't know, like, I'm not saying he's the most fidgety dude I've ever seen, but I've seen interviews with him and he has kind of like a, he's got a different energy than Derek Jensen does when it comes to like that energy will carry him through to, uh, towards victory. Paul's Jensen blinks immediately. He goes, ah. let's take a look at uh, both these guys. Let's in, see him in motion or whatever. Sure. I don't know if we'll need to kill our cameras or not. 
if I start to have issues, we will. Okay. Okay, man. All right, so this is him talking? Yep. Let's kind of try to pay attention to how often he's blinking. My mom died. And uh, she has come to me many times in dreams since. And her death... Uh, uh, I've, caught, I've, caught, I've seen him thing. blink twice, but he doesn't know he's not supposed yeah, to blink. So, so Right, I'm right. About. I'm just trying to I mean, see he's how... He's definitely got a low... He's what blinked happened? less than I have since he yeah. started talking. Oh, a lot of blinks. I remember when oh. I was a kid. I was th- oh, I was shit. To, to blink Central. All right, let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to see uh, how... I'm just trying to see how often these guys blink on average. So he, he blinks quite a bit. I mean, obviously, he doesn't, he doesn't know he's in a staring It seems contest. like he blinks as much as a, a normal no, human being does. What if Tarantino is fucking blinking like crazy? If he's blinking like crazy, I too, think he probably enough. is because he's a... Like Paul said, he's very frenetic. So blinks are probably that's, part of that. That's totally true. I mean, the thing is that... Oh, his eyes aren't even fucking open. <laughs> Look at their yeah, his eyes aren't even open half the time. He takes. <laughs> oh my god! His oh eyes... no, he he loses. <laughs> his eyes are barely open. He loses. He loses. I think he's just looking down a lot of those times. He's looking though. down. He's looking down. Fair enough. I mean, it doesn't matter though because he's getting a blink in every time he does that. Yeah, I think you're right. Those lids are coming down over the peepers oh, every time he does that. I I I in other words, not looking. I don't know. I feel like I feel like the crazy environmentalist. In other words, not looking down. This has been rigged by TJ and Paul. I feel like the crazy environmentalist guy, uh, probably who thinks his agree. mom visits him in his dreams, is probably going to be able to fucking win the staring contest. I, I agree that you know he's a crazy fucking dude with a crazy philosophy, but you know what? I think Quentin Tarantino won the staring contest. I honestly feel that. So if you guys want to go with the other way, I'm Craig. thinking I'm feeling Derek Jensen on this. I'm fine. I mean, uh, the tyranny of the majority coming out here. All right, well, go, you, go ahead, Paul, TJ. Do you, or do you agree <laughs> with that? Okay. Yep. It's the way it works, Paul. That's just the, it, it is what it is, right? Yep. <laughs> It is what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is. Okay. So, um, I did drop some frames during that, by the way, but whatever. People could hear what we were saying anyway. Well, we'll, we'll um, kill the cams. So we have to watch a video. Yeah, so next time, we'll just kill your cams if we do that again. Uh, I don't think we'll have to. But uh, anyway, uh, me versus Stephen King facing okay. off. Let's see what it's about. Let's see how we're going to compete. Which one would you rather? No, we already did that. Fuck that. Yeah, fuck that one, dude. Uh, who would be better at seducing Paul's mom? Stephen King. Why is this on there? <laughs> why Stephen should, King. Why, would why it be is on my there? mom's seduction a part of this show? <laughs> it just is. I don't know. Is your saying. mom's seduction a part of this show? Just be glad that you didn't get that one. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> oh my god, dude! If Paul had gotten that one, that'd be fucked up, dude. I mean, Stephen King is definitely my mom's age group. That's true. So he'd have that going for him. Um, I mean, he's he's loaded too, Paul. So I mean, he could freaking he could pull all the stops. Yeah, he could he mom. could sweep he could sweep mom off her feet and take her to some nice places and dinners and stuff. Which my mom like I got to be honest with you, that wouldn't work super well on my mom because she doesn't really like traveling. Mm. She's more of a homebody. She likes to stay at home and have a meal at home. She she goes places. I mean, but Stephen she likes King's to- an author though. I mean, is he? I don't think he's like really the jet setting type. I think he likes to go to Florida or some shit. So, doesn't. Like, doesn't Stephen King live kind of like in the in a cabin in the wilderness? Kind of doesn't he have kind of like a remote home? Um, am I wrong about I think that? He's living in I Florida right now. I don't know what the fuck he lives. Dude, where he Paul, lives think now. about this. Like they got. I mean, they're both up there in years. Like if they're fucking. Oh, my knee hurts. Yeah, you know, like he'll be able to empathize with your mom. Like, right. Goes, oh my. Like you know, TJ is not gonna have that empathy. He's not gonna yeah. have that going on. And I don't even really know how. Like TJ spits game by just being openly kinky and like throwing the kink out there. Like that's how TJ spits game. Maybe like, your mom, mom. Maybe your mom be fucking resonate with that. You know. Maybe mm, she's got. Like, maybe she's got some skeletons good. in that closet. You know. She wants to uh, fucking experience something a little so, different. Dude, a little I don't weird. Think so. Dude, I'll. T- dude, and this is the worst thing I ever stumbled across of my mother's when I was a kid accidentally was a vibrator. Yeah. So I don't, I, n- I never, you know, I was a kid in the, in the, in the house with her going through shit while she was at, at work for fucking 18 <laughs> years. And I never found a whip or a chain or a butt plug. That's or, exactly my point though. You know, she's been uh, suppressed for so long. Yeah. Either that, or she's just not into that crazy shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, Paul, exactly. whatever you got to tell yourself, buddy. 
I can already see which way the wind is oh, blowing whatever, on this. TJ. What the fuck ever, dude? I'll go ahead TJ, and do TJ, the I'm first cr- of us to take a loss. Yeah, because you guys are totally fucking full of shit. No, I fine. just think Stephen King is closer no, I mean, to her age range. He's got the money. He's, he's got the fucking fame. He's got yeah, the fucking... He's got the money. He's got everything going on. TJ, what do you, what do you got over Stephen King? Tell me like one reason why you should have been picked. Yeah, why would you be smoother than Stephen King at getting my mom to fuck? I don't think I should. T- I don't think I should talk about oh, it. Oh, there you go. No, no, I don't, no, no. I don't want to oh, make you... Paul sad. I don't want to make. No, Paul you're sad. not gonna make. You're not gonna fucking make me sad. <laughs> make Paul sad. There's an argument to be. You can defend yourself or not. Because I mean... Stephen King cannot spank your mama's ass like I can, Paul. <sighs> Stephen King ain't gonna rear his hand back and slap oh, that ass. Come on, TJ. you know what I mean? What the- Fuck, dude. Well, I said I didn't want to say it, but you what know. What the fuck, TJ? Mom, I'm so sorry if this is one of the <laughs> random episodes that you decide to watch. Uh, yeah. I really am. I'm going to be sure to recommend this one to her. I tried to defend your honor, but TJ's a pig. <laughs> I fucking. Much. You know, I tried not to. You rigged right. this so that he would have to fucking. He do that. I knew. I, you rigged this whole competition so that you would get to talk about <laughs> seducing my mother. Yeah, it was, all, so. it was all part of my elaborate plan, dude. Um, Okay. So the next one, go away. So the next one is uh, John Carpenter versus George Carlin. Ooh. Oh, I hope this isn't an overrated old man battle. <laughs> Here we go. Just kidding. I love, I love both of these men. A pussy eating contest. George. Oh, oh shit, dude. George. There, no, George Carlin could eat some fucking pussy. And, dude, I just. I, Pull up a picture for me, TJ. Pull yes. up a picture of young, like find one of his younger pictures when he, like his seventies era when he had the longer hair and he wore the butterfly. Co- you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah, like can he reinvent himself? As yeah, like give a, me a picture of that, and then find me, love. find me a young man picture of John Carpenter, and because we really got to do a side by side. But I, my All first right. instinct on this is that George Carlin. Saying, yeah, you're going through gut, and okay, so this dude, right? Yes. Dudes like dudes like us that have <laughs> hair that's this long and longer. One of the reasons we have it is so that it can be used like a bridle to keep us eating pussy. You know what I mean? And beards are great for eating pussy too. They feel great. Like women love having their pussies eaten with a beard. That's probably just a pussy eating beard. He probably wasn't even wearing it because he thought it looked good. It's probably just a pussy eating probably assistance beard. St- st- strictly for uh, pussy eating, right? Yes. And what about it. John Carpenter? I'm trying to pull his, his young. I'm trying to get a young picture of him as well. Come on, young, young John Carpenter. Ah, uh, ain't got the beard. Yeah, got no beard. Hair, he's got. Though. He's got the long. I don't hair, know, man. He, he's got kind of a pussy eating look about him. But you know what? Mm-hmm. He, he looks like a guy that you know. Maybe he eats a pussy. Maybe he's good at it. But George, I see George Carlin here. He looks like he's. He already looks like he's going about to go down on a pussy right now in this picture. So right now, uh, actually, uh, TJ, you don't know this about this image here. Like he's actually propositioning a woman to eat her pussy right as it's going. I was like, so can actually, I now? hold on, I'm 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 getting a closer look at this. I actually think I see some moisture. He must have ate a pussy right before he went on stage. Yeah, look in the beard. I see a little dew in yeah. the beard. That's some that's pussy dew. I can recognize. No, go, re- go back I, to Carpenter though. Yeah, let's see. Real quick. Now listen. Nah, man. Let's see if we uh, see okay, hold on. Let, me, up let me break this down for you. On one hand, he's almost got kind of a Mick Jagger thing going on here, which means that he might have eaten quite a bit of pussy. But on the other hand, he's got a nerdy thing going on that Mick Jagger didn't have, which means that he might be one of those guys like I don't like going down. Uh, I, I don't like I don't I don't lick the piss hole. He might be one of those guys mm. that's like kind of skeeved by pussy eating, too. Yeah. Whereas I, gar- I guarantee you, George Collin. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. I uh, mean, like, I just don't. I I see like there's a strong possibility John Carpenter was eating the pussy, you know, around this time, and he might still be maybe. doing it. But, but uh, I, I just know, think man, George but, Carlin. You know, I mean, but George Carlin, on the pussy, yeah, he like just mean? radiates pussy eating. So he didn't. He didn't. Eat, he didn't just eat the pussy. He feasted on that pussy. Yeah, he went to the pussy banquet. Yeah. All right, so next round will be Marilyn Manson versus S- Slick Rick. Oh, personal shit. Personal hero of TJ's and a personal hero of mine. Going and we're going to see. Head. This, could get, this could get ugly. Let's could see ugly. what they're going to do. Who would you rather see naked? Oh, man. What a <laughs> fuck up. I've already seen Manson naked. <laughs> I've already, right. I have already seen Manson naked. So Yeah, so we kind of know that already. So yeah, I kind of know. Re roll it then, because that's. All right. I mean. 
I think I, we can't I, re-roll I every time we don't re-roll. like it, but we could do that. A brutal fist fight. I think we know uh, that Slick Rick is probably going to win that, unless. No. Uh, how big is Slick Rick? Let, let's look it up. Let's look up some stats. I just don't, I, I just don't know. I mean, Manson, I know, is not much of a fighter. I will say that. I mean, I've heard of it. Manson. There's been a few instances where Manson's gotten in fights, but I've never heard of him, like, dominating somebody in a fucking fight. So Slick Rick is also. No. Uh, w- when was Manson born? The 60s? Like, 68 1969. All right. So there's not much age difference between the two of them. Slick Rick was born in 1965. Okay, so he's a little bit older. So let's see. So Slick Rick's got a little age on him. I'm trying to figure out how tall Slick Rick is. Uh, I don't think he's known for being exceptionally tall or exceptionally short. I think he, if I had to take a guess, probably like five nine, five ten, or some shit like that. Okay. Manson's Hold what on. six two? Yeah, yeah Manson's, Manson's, six Manson's around two. six Manson's Okay, so Rocky. he's got Slick Rick's about five seven, so he's kind of on the shorter side. Was he ever oh, okay. like? He was never like one of these like super badass kind of rappers, was he? He was kind of more like. I mean, he was like it, like hip hop at the time when he came out. Like he's a street dude. You know what right, I mean? Gotcha. It wasn't. It, w- it wasn't like I'm gonna get my gat and bust you in half and kick. You know that hadn't. He's not that type of rapper. But he was. He was from the streets, right? Well, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm trying to look and because I can't remember what fucking city he grew up in. So I'm pulling up his Wikipedia. Wikipedia, the show here. Okay. Um, he was born in uh, Southwest London di- uh, district of Mitcham to Jamaican parents. Okay. Okay. So, uh, actually, not even American. <coughs> right. <coughs> I mean, uh, I knew you could tell from his accent when he's rapping. Right. And then um, in 1976, when he was uh, about 11 years old, they moved to uh, the Bronx. So, from 11 until adulthood, he lived in the Bronx. Huh. So, yeah, um, I mean, no, I mean, uh, that's not, I mean, that's known as being a kind right. of a rough area of New York. Yeah, it's, a, it's a rough area to come up in. Uh, I mean, um, you, you know, can pretty much guarantee he's been in a bunch of fist fights if he grew up in the you know, Manson basically so, grew up in, in bumfuck, Ohio, Canton, Ohio, then li- then moved to Florida. So, I mean, like if there was uh, weapons allowed in this fight, I would say maybe Manson would have a chance. But I think if you're just talking about like a fist fight between a nerdy fucking uh, guy from Ohio and florida <laughs> now no i gotta be honest with you though but Slick there is a there is sort of a ferocity to manson i mean we've now, seen him kind of just like if you look at slick rick he does not look like a particularly intimidating dude he's not like big and yoke no he's, he's definitely not, not. Let's he's in good shape rick. i'll see a picture of manson and slick rick yeah find 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 a couple of you know younger pictures of like look man all right uh, because we're going to some of these guys are reach on him and shit. Like he could pop slick Rick in the face if he gets and Manson's locked. fucking crazy too. You got to keep that in mind. Like, yeah, there is a, there is a bit of a like crazy a factor. I mean, this Manson like cut himself on stage. He attacked roadies with like the fucking mic stand and shit. Right. You know. So there's not so much. You got to keep that in mind. I don't think this is cut and dried. as just like. All right, hold on. Let's up. go. Uh, let's go. 1997 for Manson. I want to get like a good like full body kind of thing. There we go. Um, let's see. Open a new tab. I want to open the image in a new tab, not the fucking link. Okay, so there's Getty Images. So, I don't know. There's actually... I mean, he's scrawny, but there's a bit of muscle on that arm. Let's I mean, see. yeah, he... Look, dude, just to do the types of shows, especially at this point in his career, that Manson was doing night after night. Right. So, you know, he's got energy out the ass at this time. He's he's in decent shape. He doesn't look like he's lifting weights or anything or sculpting at all. No. But that doesn't mean he's not. You know, he's, he he could, you know, he's strong here. So, I'm trying to find a picture of Slick Rick that reveals as much of his, like, body. Uh, You're probably not going to find any shirtless pictures of Slick Rick. I might be able to at least find something that's sleeveless, though. He yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, he was, you know, he wore big baggy things, chains over him and shit. So, but yeah, you might be able to find like a sleeveless something. Yeah. I'm not but, really finding much is giving me a super good indication here, but yeah, you're just really not. He's not this kind of artist. He's not going to be shirtless on stage. You know, he's, he's going to be dressed up and he's going to have his chains. And I mean, here's one advantage that he definitely has in a fist fight is, uh, well, I, I guess not, because Manson, I mean, at least today. But if we're talking about, like, in the like, early days, like, Slick Rick wears a lot of fucking uh, rings and well, shit. But I guess Manson does, too. I'm, like, trying to, I'm trying to fucking get it to come up. 
All right, here we What's go. What's going on here, TJ? Fuck is going on here? No problem, TJ. There you go. So you see, he's oh, wearing all these rings shit. and shit. But uh, then I thought about it, and I, I, Manson actually wears a bunch of rings too. But he didn't during this time. So if we're putting him up against this well, Manson, you know, Slick Rick still like he does, he's not this decked out still. But I've right. seen recent interviews with Slick Rick, and he still is known to go kind of over the top with the rings oh, and the gold is. and shit. Okay, are they fighting today? Yeah, I think that they're. I, I think we got to kind of put them against each other in like you know maybe well, like the nineties. Oh, do you, are you, are you, are you yeah, find, a, find a recent p- picture of Slick Rick and a recent picture of Manson, and let's see what they're working with now. Then okay, so are we putting? So we're doing t- t- today? Okay, I mean, I so, man, are they both I, still I alive? We, we either got to do today or in their prime. I'm thinking in their prime if we're doing a fist fight. Okay, in, in their prime. Why well, will so? Say I'm this. thinking this Slick Rick versus this fucking Marilyn Manson. I don't know. It's tough, man. Because Slickery doesn't really look like he's like a super hostile kind of dude. Yeah, no, no, he's not. I mean, he, at least not in his lyrics. But he he grew up in the fucking Bronx. You know what I mean? I, mean, he, I, mean, yeah, I can I, guarantee I, you he knows how to throw those hands. I can guarantee he's probably been jumped a bunch of times. He's probably had his ass beat and beat some ass a bunch of times. Like, he grew up in the fucking Bronx as a black kid right. in the 80s. Yeah, that's true. I mean, definitely a fucking much... Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, which like York, Brian Brian yeah. Wilson or whatever his name was, Warner. like he, he Warner, he's you know pretty much middle you know middle class white kid as far as I, I mean, that's true. New York in the seventies was incredibly violent and rough and crazy, especially for a black kid on you know yeah. what I mean. So, in I the mean Bronx. That's, that's uh I don't know that's that that definitely shapes you. I'm telling you, like if you go with peak. I think that Slick Rick would beat the fuck out of Marilyn Manson, but that's just my opinion. And, you know, I'm trying not to let my bias creep in because I respect Slick Rick, but, like, we're talking fist fight here. Yeah, it's fist yeah, fight. As a, as a fist fight, it doesn't really seem like... I, mean, I, I really know. I really think that if Manson fighting, could, like... I don't know if he would win. If Manson could grab something like a fucking, you know, like a mic stand or literally any object and start beating Slick Rick over the head with it, like a crazy right. person, I think that this might go a little different, but we're talking like I mean, those chains, I was gonna, I'll like, tell you this. If it goes on longer, Slick Rick wearing all those chains is going to exhaust him much quicker. That is true. I mean, I mean, I think that we would have to say if there's going to be a fist fight. I think that we, I think we have to assume there's that moment before where all the rings come off and the chains right. come off. Right. And the rings don't come off. The, the, I don't know. I don't know. Because, because, I'm, I don't know. If it, I'm saying that if the two fought. Because Manson it. might be in like a full latex bodysuit with fake tits on and shit. Right. You know, so we got to take all that. They gotta, I think they got like they a second. I think, you know, they, they, they got that whole like shove where they're I talking they shit. Meet, it's like, they meet you want to go, bitch? You know? They meet on a fucking stage and they're dressed like this and they fight, dude. That's how I want That's how well, I imagine it. I mean, if that's the case, I believe you're right that Slick Rick would be weighed down by the chains. But then again, he also would have the advantage of all the rings on his fucking fingers, too, though. Oh, he also has those chains. So now, like, if they, it does say a brutal fist fight and shit, if Slick Rick pulls one of those big fucking gold chains off and whoops Manson in the face with it, like, what's Manson got to counter that? Well, he's we're talking, cor- we're talking fist. We're talking, we're and, talking man to man here. We're not talking any right. fucking objects involved. We're that's talking. Why, that's why punches. I think it's fair. That's why I think it's fair that they both have a chance to like prep themselves. And of course, Slick Rick is not going to go into a fist fight wearing you know a hundred pounds of gold, right? So I, I'm thinking that they're both they both kind of like s- stripped down to like essential just man to man kind of shit. They're boxers and shit, right? You know, they stripped down to their boxers and I mean, you know, I, I, I don't. They go, well, go, they go the man up. Is it is it a brutal street fight? It says a or, brutal fist fight. A brutal fist fight. Okay, fist fight. All right, fair enough. If it if, was if a if it if, look, I I really think if there was objects involved, I might go different. I think that Manson would do respectable enough in a fist fight, but I think that Slick Rick having that street edge. Kind of just yeah, makes it too that's hard. That's an edge that Manson just doesn't have. So I'm going to go ahead and advance slick there. So let's go down to the losers bracket and see who among the losers shall be redeemed. All right. And who's going away forever. And who's losing forever. So in first round, Nietzsche versus Kurosawa. Damn. What is this going to be? A game of chicken with two identical 2018 Chevy Impalas. Mm. Fuck, dude. I mean, you would have to almost... Uh, your my initial reaction will almost be like, wasn't Nietzsche just going to fucking crash into him? Isn't he going to be willing to go all the way? I mean, like... <sighs> Kurosawa, Kurosawa comes from that also, samurai tradition, too, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but also very dedicated. I mean, damn, this is a tough one. I dude. don't know if either of these fuckers would swerve. I, I think mean, they might chicken, just crash into each chicken, other and die. Chicken is basically a game of staring into the abyss. 
it's like ignoring what's coming at you and, and choosing instead to stare into the void yeah and remove the fear from yourself of what's heading at you. I hate to use like a, a, a Japanese stereotype here, but Kurosawa, he got all that kamikaze thing going on. So, Oh, you racist piece of shit, TJ. Not all Japanese <sighs> people are kamikaze pilots. I understand. Okay? I get you. You're right. Not yeah, all Jap- very honorific based kind of culture, you know, that would probably that Kurosawa. Might but I mean, like I, I specifically say, listen hey, to I have- videos of, I mean, I watched Kurosawa talking about when the world war two was lost and how they, everyone expected the emperor to come on the radio and say like, we are now committing mass ritual suicide, you know, and everyone was ready to do it, you know, because yeah. that was just the culture they were raised in. So, I mean, I think that like Kurosawa was kind of raised in a tradition where it's like, if you got to die, you got to die, you know? Yeah, this would be a tough one. Fuck, dude. This is actually going to be a pretty good one for these two. I think neither one of these dudes would swerve. I can't see Nietzsche jumping out, and I can't see Kurosawa jumping out, so there's a tie here. So what what, what, do, we do? what do we do in the case of a tie? A uh, game of chicken can end in a tie. often does end in a tie. Shit. Yeah, how do you win? Who wins a game of chicken if there's a tie? Do you just like... Uh, I think we might have to fucking re-roll this category, TJ. Because I see them both just crashing their fucking... Well, hold on. Let me, look up the, let me look up the rules of chicken if neither person I know swerves. the rules of chicken. I mean, I know that... I can tell you the rules of chicken. I know that whoever swerves loses. No, it's not even swerves. It's like whoever jumps out, swerves, or deviates from the course, or lets off the gas, or hits the brakes first. Right. Like any of those actions, you lose. So you put uh, cars. But what if ne- uh, no one does that? Upon Is that just a tie? Apart. You put two cars and agreed upon length apart on a long straight road or a long straight runway. The cars are aimed at each other. The dudes in the cars are given a countdown: three, two, one. They both are supposed to floor it and go straight. And the first person to deviate from that in any way loses the game of chicken. Right. So that means swerving, jumping out of the, bailing out of the car, hitting your brakes. Slowing down, letting off the gas, mm-hmm. all of that shit loses. But, you know, yeah, a tie in a game of chicken it ends in a vehicle accident. Right. It ends with like a fucking head on collision at high speed yes. in which both, both people do. are likely to die. <clears throat> um, I guess we have to assume either they both die or we have to do a new category. All right. We're going to call this one a draw. Yeah. And yeah, I roll. Do- yeah, that's just too difficult. I mean, I guess, uh, yeah, those two personalities. Who would survive island. longer if trapped on a desert island? Okay, I think this one we could probably fucking find a winner for, for sure. Well, I'd say uh, Kurosawa is probably the advantage of the fact that Japan is just a huge-ass fucking island. Where where in Japan is Kurosawa from? I don't know that. I'll look it on it. I'm assuming that he, at least as a kid, lived through part of World War II. He did. Yes. And he so, was born in uh, Omachi in the Omurai district of Tokyo. Oh, he was, he's from so, the city. So he's from, from the a city. Si- he's a city kid. Um, but, you know, in that era, in the World War Two era, there would have been a lot of like war preparedness and survival training and shit going on. I mean, Japanese soldiers were known for I can't remember the name of the island it was in the South Pacific, but there was some fucking island that it was just like a death trap. I mean, we won eventually. Are you talking about the, uh, Okinawa? Yeah, Okinawa or Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima. Like where oh, they Iwo just, Jima. Oh, where okay. they just dug themselves in, you yeah. know what I mean? And just survived for weeks and weeks, and they'd pop out and kill a couple Americans. And there were only like, you know, 15 of them to our thousand, but they just... Made it so hard with tiger traps and all kinds of crazy shit. Oh, the, the, the Iwo Jima battle, the U.S. Marines versus the Japanese soldiers is a pretty crazy. I battle. feel it's, like too that there's only like Kurosawa, thirteen survivors. I feel like Kurosawa was Japanese just time. more more like hands on in general. Yeah, like than Frederick Nietzsche. Like Fre- Nietzsche was was you know he was a an, a, an academic. You know he wasn't he wasn't going I mean, off so in the woods and shit. He, he's yeah, but an Kurosawa academic. was an academic, but he was also a, he's a film academic. He was a guy that went out there in the world and did film, you know, like he went to remote locations. Doing he, film is not is yeah. not something that makes you but, a better survivalist. Well, I think that, he, I think that the ability to interact with your like he knew how to fucking interact with his environment in a way that I don't know that Nietzsche did. Nietzsche I don't know. What remember. kind of what kind of hardships did Nietzsche face in his childhood? Did he grow up during a famine or a war? I let's assume he grew up during World out. War One. So let's find out what Nietzsche went through. 
Yeah. What well, kind Mitchell's, of childhood? I think Mitchell's earlier than World War I, I want to say. So was let's he? say, uh, yeah, he was. Um, so in addition to promoting physical exercise, I'm, li- this, I'm reading about uh, Kurosawa's childhood right here. Uh, Isamu Kurosawa was open to Western traditions and considered this is about his, uh, what is his father? Yeah, I think so. Uh, da, 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 da. Another major child influence was Higo Kurosawa, Kira's older brother, by four years in the aftermath of the Great Kano earthquake of 1923. Higo took the 13 year old Akira to visit the devastation. When the younger brother wanted to look away from the human corpses and animal carcasses scattered everywhere, Higo forbade him to do so, encouraging Akira to instead face his fears by confronting them directly. Okay, Damn. that's pretty fucking. Some, that's, that's pretty, pretty metal. fucking metal. Yeah, like, do not look away, little brother. Yeah. Like, no. holy shit. No, son. I mean, he went See through some... the, vi- the devastation. Except the some, devastation. He went through some pretty brutal fucking shit in his life. Right. The, the occup- U.S. occupation of Japan, earthquakes. I mean, there's just, that's, that's a lot World of crazy shit to live through. Yeah, World War II. I mean, the bombing of your country <laughs> with atomic weapons. I mean, that's fucking crazy. Let's see it's about... Crazy as shit. Some tells me Nietzsche didn't have it. Uh, super easy either, but I, yeah, I would assume the time period he lived in. So, life was very born on the fifteenth of October, eighteen forty-four, Nietzsche grew up in the town of Roken, might be Rocken, now part of Lutzen, Lutzen, near Leipzig, in the Prussian province of Saxony. He was named after the after King Friedrich Wilhelm the Fourth of Prussia, who turned forty-nine on the day of Nietzsche's birth. Uh, Nietzsche's parents, Karl Ludwig Nietzsche, a Lutheran pastor and former teacher, and uh, Franziska Nietzsche, uh, married in 1843, the year before their son's birth, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Nietzsche attended a boys' school, then a private school, where he became friends with Gustav Krug and Wilhelm Pinder, all three of whom uh, came from highly respected families. Okay. Did his Academic father records. ever take him to a corpse pit and tell him <laughs> yeah. to not look away and to absorb the devastation? Well, that so was that was a that was a that was Kurosawa's Kuris- older brother, but yes, uh, that did not happen no, to it, Nietzsche. It, it said no. That's what it's you read it. It said he took Akira and his brother to the fucking devastation. Oh, well, hold on, let me see. I thought it was his brother that took him. Akira's older uh, brother well, by four whatever. years in the aftermath. Uh, yeah, Haigo. Haigo his, was his brother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, whatever. So it was his brother that took him and told him somebody like, don't look away. Uh, Nietzsche, so Nietzsche, Nietzsche was a, Nietzsche like was like a was prep a... school kid, you know. So I mean, like his, his silver spoon. I don't Nietzsche think that's like what I'm saying. I think it. Nietzsche was pretty insulated from like much of the horrors of life, you know, other than the existential ones. Um, well, then we have a winner in my mind. Yeah, it's gotta be Kurosawa, dude. Sorry, Nietzsche. Just All didn't right. have a hard enough life. Alfred Hitchcock, Kurt Cobain. Who's gonna what a battle this one's gonna be? A dance competition. <laughs> oh shit, dude. So I don't imagine that uh poor Hitchcock, he just keeps getting the unlucky draws. I don't imagine that poor Hitchcock is much no. of a dancer. Listen, here's the thing. I don't think this is a hundred percent cut and dried. All right. Because Kurt was a fucking dancer either. Right, yeah. but I mean he's no. He's a young man that can, you know, move around and shit. So he's, yeah, but I mean, Hitchcock had a real comedic sense of humor. Yeah, maybe he could have put he together hid. like a funny dance. Yeah, that he that he hid behind this dour persona. I could see Hitchcock coming out and just like moving his shoulders and swaying his hips a little bit and beating, you know, just for the sheer funniness of it. Because Kurt uh, Cobain. There's actually yeah, a video of Kurt Cobain. I'm oh, sorry to interrupt you, Paul. Uh, dancing. Oh, really? I uh, so if you guys want to kill your cameras, we guess yeah. you can see. Uh, there's no, Kurt Cobain and Eddie Vedder slow dancing at MTV uh, Video Awards. There's also him dancing on stage, TJ. Okay. All right, everybody, yeah, uh, kill on. your cam for a second. I mean, I've seen him dance on stage, or if you want to call it dancing, I've seen him thrash on stage. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, you said it was Kurt Cobain and Eddie Vedder dancing. Yep. This is some dancing from them. So get an idea of Kurt's skill. <clears throat> okay. I'm pulling it up now. Slow dancing at MTV Awards. Are they actually going to dance here? Let's see the dancing. Okay. I mean, that's pretty this white just, boy dancing. This is just being gay together. This is Damn, not dancing. This, that's a little bit of a dance, but whatever. It's not much not of a really. dance. It didn't look, didn't look super rhythmic or anything. But I don't really no. feel like... Uh, 
But that's not that, that, look. They're not going to have a slow dance together. So, I guess that, that's a fair enough point. Yeah, I mean, I don't, the, what, what, what about this one? Let me look. Let me take a look at this one on my end. I'll just mute it. Yeah, you just look at it because it keeps fucking overloading my shit when I try to play a video. Yeah, I mean, I've seen Kurt Cobain hopping around on the stage with look, his guitar. I just, I just don't. I can't imagine. I mean, I can't imagine fucking Alfred Hitchcock being able to dance much at all. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's. Maybe he has the the rhythm inside him or whatever. But I don't think Kurt Cobain is by any, by any stretch of the imagination a great dancer. From what I'm seeing him like moving around, dancing around, like he's not like it's really much more just like kind of thrashing around. But, but at least he could bring he could bring some energy into it at least, you know. Yeah, I think there's energy that Hitchcock probably just wouldn't have. I, I do agree with Paul. I think Hitchcock would have something that kind of be like, haha, that's that's good, and that's it, nice. But I don't think he'd, he'd, be able he'd to go it. funny with it because he would have to. And I think that you know I don't know maybe the, I don't know, maybe the it. sensibilities of Hitchcock would be able to compensate for his lower energy and you know obviously less. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you guys want to give it to Cobain, I won't stand in your way. I won't. I won't. Uh, you know, I won't make a. I won't make a scene about it. I just feel like. Uh, I feel like you know if we're just talking. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't really feel able. To, I don't really see Hitchcock being able to put anything together on that. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Maybe he could put up. Go, maybe he could put something together that was funny or fun in some way, but I don't know. I feel like uh, you know, I feel like Kurt Cobain's at least going to be able to bring energy to it if it's not exactly a great dance. All right, fair enough. Well, what do you think, Scotty? Because you're kind well, of a tiebreaker on this. Well, I looked into this. Uh, saw if anything about Hitchcock's uh, ability to dance. Didn't see anything. So, as uh, without any new information on that basis, I'm gonna have to go with uh, youth here and think. I'd say Kirk Cobain would probably win. All right. There it is. Kurt proceeds. All right. Me versus Quentin Tarantino. Time to eliminate TJ for good. Come on, Quentin. All right. Two and out, TJ. Leave the real men in a this rock? competition. Okay, so this is supposed to be a, a rock, paper, scissors uh, contest. Best two, best two out of three. <clears throat> Quentin just mind fucks you, TJ, and beats you both times. Yeah, See, because I'm pretty. Quinn would, I'm Quinn pretty fucking be, good at rock paper scissors. So, I mean, I've played against you a few times, and I haven't seen any difference in the average of playing uh, rock paper scissors with other people. I didn't. I didn't note you as like a particularly skillful rock paper scissors. Oh player. yeah, no, no you, got, you guys are both full of shit. I win. I win all the time in rock paper yeah, scissors. Be, all right, dude. You know what? I'll, I'll I'll let you determine my vote by rock paper scissor. All right, we can't. You guys can't do it because there's like input lag and shit. Rock paper. Not only that, but last time we tried to play that on the show, Scotty's timing was so far off that he could not fucking nail the rock paper. Bullshit, TJ. Oh, you're just a friend. All right, we we could actually just do digital rock paper scissors. So here's what you guys do: instead of the one two three shoot, text you. Uh, Yeah, text Paul. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) One two three. Text me rock paper or scissors. All right, let me. I'll tell you who wins. Let me get Paul's thing. I mean, that's what the game is. I mean, you get, it's it's also about it's, you, I don't know. There's like an element of locking your eye with that opponent and being like trying to project like you know what. Right, you but think we can't do that shit. now. We can't. Right, we TJ, can't look, do at, that. look at me, TJ. Look at me. All right. Yeah. Look. Look I'm at not, Scotty in the eye. All right. All right. Text me. Ten seconds, TJ. So I'm, 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 I'm hold on. I'm bringing right it up. Now. I'm bringing it up. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. I make all sure right. you just text me and not each other. Oh, right. I know. I, I, I have just you in the text. Hold on. I got to go to just Paul. It's fucking hard. All right, Paul. DJ sucks at this. Okay, shut up. All right, I got you. I got this going. All right, TJ, you ready? Yeah, let's look at each other for a second. Three, two, one, text. All right, well, I didn't spell that right, but whatever. All right, well, you both tied. You both picked scissor. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, TJ. You got to shoot again. Look each other in the eye. All right, TJ. Three, two, one, text. Ooh, shit. Scotty's rock smashes that scissor, TJ. Damn. Oh, I know how shit, this game bitch. works. Yes! See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Fucking bastards, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John Carpenter versus oh, Marilyn Manson. That's beautiful. That's See, beautiful. Scotty played you like a harp from hell. He knew you were going to double up, and he picked that fucking rock. He knew you were going to shoot scissor again. I knew it, dude. Because you're I'm an absolute lord. He played you like a harp from hell. All right. So this one is a vigorous intellectual debate on whatever subject these two would be at odds about. So what would John Carpenter and Marilyn Manson be at odds about? 
I know Manson's a big film buff. Maybe they'd be uh, they'd have a disagreement about just the state of cinema or something. Or maybe they have the agree- disagreement about what like uh, you know true cinema is or some bullshit like that. Mm, I don't know because I don't know that their tastes would be all together all that different. Probably not. I'm trying in to think terms of, of cinema. I'm trying to think of something that uh, that they would disagree on. It's kind of like rough because they're. I feel like they would probably agree with a lot of the similar shit. It probably TJ, yeah. How does it feel to go two and out in this competition today, TJ? I I knew it going in. <sighs> with you guys as the rest of the panel, I knew. I knew how it go. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you were treated unfairly, weren't you, TJ? Yes, I was. As oh, usual. really? How? Me and you did a random competition. And I won. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, but that wasn't really a fair fucking paper axis. You got oh, you got to look you got you got to look your opponent in the eye and psych him out and stuff. I wasn't able to do that through a fucking Oh, text. whatever, TJ. Whatever, dude. <laughs> but you know whatever. One. I agreed to it. That was dumb of me. I shouldn't have agreed to it. Yeah, well, you lost. Yeah, I guess I did. I guess I did. Did I don't know. What would they disagree on? I mean, it's kind of hard to know what mm. two people that we really don't know. Yeah, would, I think we're going to pick like, another one for these cuz there's no obvious like disagreement here. Who would last longer in a zombie apocalypse? Well, at this point, probably that's Manson question. because that's tough. Because I mean, Carpenter's some, Carpenter's so Carpenter old. Carpenter but are we have better ideas about how to do it? I think that we probably. could. Uh, I think Manson's reaction to the zombie apocalypse would probably be to just like do a bunch of drugs and mm-hmm. you know, but and like become then again, a zombie. Then again, he is, uh, you know, he's younger and more. So are we assuming that these guys are both like in their prime when the zombie apocalypse happens? Through I think some to magical be fair, miracle? we have to. OK, because John Carpenter is so much older than Manson is now. It's only fair. Well, John Carpenter is Canadian, which you like, you know, like every fucking horror movie, uh, zombie horror movie in the U.S. Everyone's trying to get to Canada. Does that give him an advantage? Also, so, Manson's got a bunch of guns. I don't know that John Carpenter has any guns. It's yeah, definitely ooh, a good idea true. to have guns if you're in a zombie he apocalypse. Might. I mean, so let me look up if uh, let me look up if John Carpenter is a gun owning man. Is he a gun nut, dude? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Does Manson owns a bunch of guns, TJ? Yeah, really? I, I know he at least owns a few. All right, John Carpenter. I want to know if he owns guns. He's got a fucking gun. I'm unable to figure out if. Well, here, uh, no, that's just him with a prop. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure if John Carpenter has guns or not. Well, we know Manson for sure has a gun. John I know, Carpenter sounds like you might not care about guns. I know Manson has guns for sure. I've seen him with his guns. Um, then again, I think that I think Manson might just kind of be like a uh, zombie apocalypse. Okay, let's do some cocaine <laughs> or whatever. So, Dude, cocaine and guns, though. I mean, that's a fucking yeah. I mean, that, that might be a recipe for survival in a zombie apocalypse. I don't know. Hmm, could be. I mean, does Manson like live? Like, does he have like, access to a compound or something that you know? I mean, he's he, he's fucking a, a, a buddies a bunch of L.A. types. I mean, maybe Manson. I also know a compound. Here's another thing about Manson: is he tends to have like bodyguards with him. I don't know that John Carpenter is necessarily employing bodyguards, but then again, maybe Manson's bodyguards get bit and turn on him. So, oh shit, dude, that's right. They're fucking trying to save Manson, and then suddenly, like, oh! next thing he knows, there's two fucking big burly fucking zombies coming towards him. But he's got guns, though. I mean, we can't give him his fucking yeah, bodyguards. Let's start of his like, goons, yeah, TJ. His well, guns. No goons. I mean, no, this is about how you survive in the zombie apocalypse. So you got to fucking put them in whatever the context of their life is when it happens. They're both rich. They're right. both. But John Carpenter doesn't just have bodyguards on hand, I don't think. Probably uh, not. Well, here's he's another thing. got the helicopter <laughs> you on know, hand or some shit. He has private personal security 24-7. Uh, not, I don't know if it's 24 seven. I know it's often. I mean, if you had like evidence of that, like this is his normal life every day. He's got people watching his ass. Then I'd say fair enough. All right. Well, we'll, we'll go ahead and just leave the bodyguards out of it. Yeah, Uh, let's leave that out. I mean, like, look, I'm more willing to have the possibility of like John Carpenter is buddies with someone that has a fucking bunker in New Zealand, you know, like fine, whatever. If he can get there. Well, I know they both, they both have rich friends that they might be able to hide out in a bunker somewhere. So but like, let's but last longer. Who let's ask if we right? actually if they actually get to that bunker. So Manson, like I said, has guns. We don't, we know Manson has a good aim from some of the videos we've seen. 
I don't know. Yeah, we watched that video not too long on here. I mean, yeah, does John Carpenter make it to that bunker? Let's say, let's say they're trying to just go or the fucking woods or whatever. Because, you know, are they able to get from where they're? I mean, Manson's in fucking a huge population center in L.A. I mean, that's going to be difficult as shit to get out of. <sighs> hmm. I mean, unless he has a fucking like helicopter, he can fly out, out of there. I mean, come the fuck on. How's I don't, think, get I don't think either of these dudes has a helicopter. Okay, if they got a helicopter, then like they both have to. I mean, if either Carpenter of them, if either of them had a helicopter, I think that that, that person would just be the winner. Because well, I'll, I'll say it was Harrison Ford, and he can fly a fucking thing or like a, a plane or a helicopter. That is true. They? John Carpenter and Marilyn Manson probably both know a lot of people that have helicopters, right? And bunkers and other stuff. So they they would definitely try to like call one of their rich friends that they know has like some kind of bomb shelter or something. That Where again, does John Carpenter live? Does he live in L.A. too, or does he live in New York? I, or, I believe they both live in L.A., but I could check they on both that. both live in L.A., okay. Oh, man, that's fucking... Which is John not, Carpenter is the true Mephistopheles of Los Angeles, dude. I don't know where John Carpenter lives. Let's see. Maybe he doesn't live in Los Angeles anymore. I don't I don't know that he does. Because he might have fucking... fucking... John Carpenter lives in Wyoming, you know, that I might fucking give it to him right there. Right, because like, he, he, li- he might live in the better place at this point. Yeah, he might live in fucking, you know, an area with almost no people. Let's well, tell me, like, see. what area of L.A. these guys live in, too, if that's available. All right, I'll try to figure that out. That makes yeah, a difference. Manson lives in the Hollywood Hills. I okay. All right. That's actually, like... That's actually pretty fucking beneficial for him because the Hollywood Hills are... It's pretty easy to get to the high desert from the Hollywood Hills, like the Tehachapi Desert. Yeah. You're really primed to like just start heading up into the fucking foothills and then go up to the high desert. And Tehachapi is empty. Oh, right. fuck so it's yeah. kind, of, kind of like the place you want to be in a fucking zombie apocalypse. Now, where does Carpenter live? I am trying to figure out. Yeah, he still lives in Los Angeles. Oh, shit. I does it not, say where in LA? I like am Burbank trying or? to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, LA is yeah. fucking huge. So yeah, that that does not. Yeah, saying LA does not narrow it down. Because like, if he lives in like, uh, I don't know, if he lives in the valley, you know, in let's LA, say he lives in Santa Monica or some shit, though, or in Venice, you know, he can fucking hop on a boat. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If he lives right on the coast, a boat is an option, and he probably knows yeah. some rich dudes with boats there. Uh, it says here that John Carpenter lives in West Hollywood. Okay. Oh shit, dude! Not the hills, though. No, um, West Hollywood. Yeah, we, we we've actually all stayed out there, so we know exactly where he lives. Oh man, he's right so, in the biggest things. Now let's see yeah. if I, let's see if Scotty's accurate where Marilyn Manson lives. So let's say uh, I thought he lived in the Hollywood Hills. Marilyn Manson house. I'm trying to figure this out here. Yeah, because if he lives in the Hollywood Hills, I'd probably choose that house to have the zombie apocalypse go down in because you're a stone's throw from nowhere, you know. Um, I'd, I would not want to be in West Hollywood. Fuck no, dude. That's zombie central. Yeah, that's fucking that place would be eaten alive. Yeah, let me see if I can figure this out. I know I, I could have sworn years. I, he might have sold that house, though, since then, if I'm thinking. I'm, I'm not sure where he lives now. It's so I really do. I, I really think it's important to find this out because I really do. Yeah, think he, this comes out of uh, uh, it does say he lives in the Hollywood Hills. OK, OK. Yeah. Um, so as far as now, let's let's. I just want to double check that I'm not wrong about this. So hold on, I'm gonna pull up a map real quick. <clears throat> a lot of thought going into this one. Yeah. Well, you have to. You have to treat this fucking um, scientific shit, TJ. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. So I'm looking for Hollywood so I can find the hills here. Hollywood is up there. Yeah, West Hollywood. And uh, so this is this is West Hollywood. The Hollywood Hills are uh, kind of like up here, like and and you you can see here, like this is Devil's Punch Bowl. Like this is nothing. <laughs> yeah, this, that is ain't the, shit, dude. this is like the big empty, and you keep going this way, and it's the big empty. You know what I mean? Like there's not a whole lot of like little like huge towns dotted out. So, uh, John Carpenter would be starting his fight in West Hollywood down in here, which is super densely populated. This is right by the coast in LA. We stayed in West Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, shit, so this dude. is like, you know, I mean, this is going to be zombie central Manson is up here, which I think gives him a distinct possibility. Like if Manson's in the Hollywood Hills, he's up here. 
which means like, yeah, he's still in the thick of some fucking crazy city shit, but he is a pretty close to this, which is a giant fucking desert wilderness park. I mean, in LA, I mean, if you look at the population density, I mean, like, let me, let me see if I can find a map of that just so people can get in fucking. I mean, people are going to, people are going to flood that wilderness though, too. Well, I mean, yeah, but look, dude, it's going to be, they're going to be people trying to get to this, but the people that are down in here, a lot of people are going to get bottlenecked down there. Like, unless, holy fuck, guys. What? What? This is crazy. Today, West Hollywood's population density is about 19,000 residents per square mile. That is pretty crazy. What? Yeah, that's what, I'm talk- that's what I'm talking about. I mean, LA Holy is not a great fuck. place to be in a zombie apocalypse, period. But no. just considering that, dude, considering that you have 19,000 residents per square mile, I mean, like, a- a- any additional mile you have to go is another fucking mile that of fucking literally possibly 20,000 zombies. Let's see. Fuck, dude. Let me, let me, let's see if I can get like a more detailed map of the Hollywood Hills. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. So Manson's in this area. And as you can see, he's already in an area that you can tell is mountainous and way less densely populated. So these windy roads here may look like an impediment. And you can say, you can see there's t- still tons of houses. But if I zoom out, from this and go to West Hollywood and Beverly Hills, you'll see what I'm talking about when I zoom in and it starts to detail out in terms of pop. Dense. Look, look at the grid. Oh shit, dude. Look at the grid. Look at the homes. Look how they're laid out. So you see what I mean? So Manson is zombie food. dude. I mean, neither of them is in a great location if the zombie apocalypse happens, but I guess Manson's location is a little better and we know he has guns. I feel like this is, I feel like this is done. Let me show you guys some pictures of the Hollywood Hills. Yeah. And you'll get an idea of what we're dealing with in different. Oh shit, dude. In some point, I mean, fuck, how does zombie even get up that? I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like he's, if if you block off the front part of that, a zombie ain't scaling the side of that fucking thing. This is my point. Yeah. Eventually people are going to come up here looking for shelter and shit but if you take off you're up in the hills and as long as you head like northeast you're heading right for you know just the big empty the high desert in california in Tehachapi. so you know what i mean i think i think manson's got a clear advantage i mean i can pull up some pictures of uh, west hollywood just for uh, reference just so we can look it's a lot right. flatter with a lot more ability to develop land there. I mean, we stayed there, but a lot of people have never been there. So just for reference, I'll show some people some pictures of West Hollywood. So there you go. Oh, fuck, uh, dude. You know, right. I mean, you're going to be boxed uh, in. That says it all. You're going to be boxed in there. There's no there's no yeah, you're, you're much you're much safer in the hills. And you can see back back in the uh, very back of this picture, which is kind of cool, is kind of it's not this is not exactly where Manson lives, but he lives in these hills up behind Hollywood. Right. Separate from all this weird grid and shit right and you know that's gonna box people in and it's gonna be really hard to even fucking see what's going on yeah here's west hollywood it's just you know it's it's ass to ass people it's pretty close this one this one shows another problem of west hollywood look how much closer it is to downtown uh la you can see it looming in the very very background here downtown la imagine the throngs of people that are going to be making their way into west hollywood trying to escape the epicenters and shit and trying to make their way up into these hills manson's got a head start manson's already up in the hills and heading for the desert plus i mean one of his rich friends in the the hills uh might have a fucking bunker i mean he might have his own for fuck's sake yeah right. you know what i'm gonna have to go with manson so and i know it. he's got guns and i know he's got a good aim so i'm gonna go with manson on this he's just he's got too many advantages of geography and uh you know all the other things so uh sorry john carpenter sad to see you go but uh, it's time to move on. So, Paul, it's are you ready? Are you, are you ready, ready, Paul Zigo? Are, are you ready for me to destroy uh, you, Paul Zigo? You are a girly man, Paul. Now that I've shared screens, I'm trying to figure out how to like full screen you again. Okay, just drag it into place. Um, yeah, who am I going against? Oh, Schwarzenegger. Oh, oh, no. You going Please up? No you going to be match. terminated, no Paul? Match. You are going to be terminated. I probably am. A fight to the death on top of a skyscraper. 
<laughs> I'm not even going to contest it. I'm not even going to even oh, pretend man. to contest. That's retarded that I rolled that. <laughs> Paul, I will kill you, Paul. I'm what dead. Place, I didn't do anything. That shit. <laughs> but that's okay, Paul. Paul, you're still in this. You're still. You get, yeah. You get oh, to go fuck. up against Marilyn Manson. Manson. You're going to get to go up against oh, Manson Paul's next time. Worm food, dude. <laughs> Oh my God! All right, dude. Scotty, well, are you dude, ready? TJ, can I ask you yes, a question? Go ahead, you Paul. came up with this. Is that the worst thing that I could have rolled against Schwarzenegger on the list? Almost, yes. No? yes. Yeah, I would say <laughs> yeah, about pretty much. Yeah, it sounds like it, you dude. were destined to not win, Paul. <laughs> I will say my that. Life, you dude. got Arnold fighting on top of a skyscraper. Yeah, I mean, like, like of an action movie. There was arm wrestling in there, I think, and like a few others that you would have lost probably. But like that was, I didn't even, I wasn't even going to bother talking that out. I mean. <laughs> You would lose no, that. I mean, come on. We, we I mean, that's Paul's like turn off the building. That's Arnold's bread and butter right there. Um, all right. So, Scotty, you ready to take on Mr. Rogers? Oh, damn, dude. I guess so. Fuck. I don't envy you this position, man. I what do I do with Mr. Rogers? No, we already did the chicken. A 100-yard foot race. Ah, oh, dude, I'd smoke him. Look, I'd smoke Mr. Rogers. I'm sorry. Mm, I mean, can you pull up a picture of Fred Rogers like in his prime? Because Scott is pretty much in his prime now. Was he ever an athlete? I uh, think he was. was. He was a swimmer, but dude, like in a short. He, oh instance, shit, Scotty! If he was a swimmer, have you ever competitively run or swam? The only thing I ever did was I did track when I was in uh, school. Okay. So, so let's I, mean, I, don't know. I, I, I think I mean, we need to look. I'm pretty fast. I, I think I could be Fred Rogers in a foot race. So let's. I, I mean, I believe see. you. I believe that you're but fast. Maybe not. I, I don't know. Like I've never but seen him. He run. was. I, I I seem to remember that he was an accomplished athlete, like a college, a collegiate athlete. Uh, if, and, if it was like run a long distance, he'd probably win. But a hundred yards, I think. I, I think. All I'd right. Let it. me see. I'm trying to figure out what kind of athletics he was involved in. Da 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 da. da. I may be wrong. He might have been not involved, but I, I seem to remember he played football or. Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I know he swam, was a swimmer. Sw- swam <coughs> or wrestled or some shit. So I want to see. <coughs> oh, fuck, I beat him in that race. Um, early work. No. Early life, maybe. Shine introverted. Homebound after suffering bouts of asthma. <laughs> uh, he yeah. was bullied and taunted for his weight as a child, calling him Fat uh-huh. Freddy. Hold on, though. As a child, as a child, lonely child, he attended Latrobe High School, overcame his shyness. Mm-hmm. Overcame his mm-hmm. shyness. Um, okay. Uh, and then I made a couple of f- friends who found out the core of me was okay, and one of them was the head of the football team. Uh oh, Scotty. Da, 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 da. Uh oh, Scotty! I got my hundred yard dash, Paul. I don't Uh-oh, see. Scotty. I don't see anything about this about him. Him. He. He getting. Oh. Him getting involved he made in athletics. Fr- <laughs> he was. Paul. He was friends uh. with the head of the football team. Uh, uh. But he was a fat kid with asthma. I don't think that this is really All right. Fair enough. Yep. Give it to Scotty. Sorry, I got to beat you, Mister Rogers. But you know. I thought I remembered uh, Mr. Rogers being an Maybe he was, but day. I'm not able to confirm hold on, that. Hold on. Easily. I'm going to do some independent fucking research. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll roll it oh, back. Bullshit. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, Paul, already has, no, uh, bullshit. You can't fucking change the thing after it's been done. All this right, is bullshit. All right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. Well, Paul's going to, like, see I'm, if Paul it was can look, unfair, but it, It's already been decided. So, I mean, he can look, and if he feels like he's a bomb, Mr. Rogers pride. Uh, Mr. Rogers, like, look, it wasn't talking about emotions and feelings. If it had been that, then Mr. Rogers would have won. All right, Derek Jensen versus Stephen King. Do we already do the elevator one? We already did the elevator one. We already did that. Yeah, we did. I'm going to go maybe clear some of these out, actually. A drinking contest. Stephen King. Stephen King was an alcoholic <laughs> yeah, for years. He's an alcoholic. He's an alcoholic. Uh, I don't think alcoholic. Derek Jensen is an alcoholic. That, that's, I mean, sorry, Derek. Wow. I mean, yeah, that's that, that's like kind of like Paul at the skyscraper. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just like sometimes. Fucking drunk. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to stop sharing screens for a minute because I want to clear out some of the fucking ones that we've already done here. Okay. So they stop coming up. So let's see who's fighting. George Carlin and Slick Rick. Ooh, weird fight. Let's see what they're going to do. Okay. A rap battle. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, George. 
Oh wait, Scotty's Scotty dropped. Oh well, you know. Wait, let's just you know. There was no need for debate move. on that one, but we'll wait for Scotty. Yeah, I don't back. think Scotty will have any, but I don't want to move any further without his input. <laughs> no, I don't no, think Scotty, but I don't, I don't <laughs> think Scotty will be. I mean, like he just, like he's a rapper. You know, what I mean, like right. what are you gonna do? Not only is he a rapper, he's like, in my opinion, one of the best rappers that has ever lived. One of the most influential rappers of all time. Right. You know so what I, mean? I mean, you know. So. Yeah, not not a good role for uh, George. So a George rap battle. Fuck. How lu- how does Slick Rick get so lucky and I get a high stakes battle at the top of a skyscraper? Well, with you could Arnold look at Schwarzenegger. it. You could look at it as that way or you could look at it as, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, Slick Rick got, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger got lucky, you know? <laughs> yeah, but Slick, I'm actually like looking at the state of the game here. I'm pretty shocked at some of the, like, I'm not shocked that Schwarzenegger's still in it. It's kind of shocking Scotty's still in it. Uh, Scotty's Stephen back. King's All right, so Rick Scotty, you, we went ahead and proceeded on the last one because it was George Conlon versus Slick Rick, and they rolled Rap Battle. Okay, so, well, yeah, that's done. I so, mean, I, yeah, I didn't th- I didn't think it'd be controversial with you, but we didn't move on. We vamped for a minute waiting for you. So uh, we're, I mean, that's, come on, guys. Like, but, yeah, I didn't think you'd have any argument. <laughs> that's like, it's, it's Slick Rick. I mean, like, I don't I haven't listened to much of his music, but I know he's a famous rapper. So, All right. I mean, come on. Can on. George Carlin get back in this? Because uh, the next round is him versus Akira Kurosawa. And let's see how they're going to fucking do it. Fight to the death on top of a skyscraper. We already did that. Oh, but I, I, I elected to keep that in. So I guess because uh, last time it was such a joke. All right. So I guess we'll I guess we'll do it once more before I take it off the list permanently. So who's going to win? Kura Kura Sour, George Carlin fight to the death on top of a si- skyscraper. Uh, you know, what Kura kind of Sour comes George? from? Like, where did he grow up? He grew up in. I mean, he grew up kind of a fucking uh, little, you know, criminal, busting in the shit, and uh, yeah. I mean, he, 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 he was York, like a bad kid. He, yeah, he was like oh, a street, yeah. he was a street kid. You know, he was a okay. fucking street tough or whatever. But that Kurosawa, makes, you know, Kurosawa saw the horrors of war and, uh, you know, comes from a samurai lineage. And uh, Right. He comes from know. a samurai lineage, but I come I don't from know a if... lineage of, like, fucking Celtic picked warriors right. and shit, and I'm not one. But uh, Kurosawa, so took not... it, Kurosawa took it pretty seriously, though. Um, obviously, he made a bunch of films about samurai and stuff. But I don't know if he was, I don't know if he was uh, learned any martial arts himself or if it was just something he revered. But George Carlin, I know, got into some scraps as a fucking young man. So yeah, I mean, Kurosawa made movies about samurai shit. He knew how to stage cool sword battles. So you have to imagine he knew something. I mean, he about had to have some passing sword. familiarity with fucking martial arts. Because sure. as I understand it, and you guys can correct me. You're way more into Kurosawa than I am, but I've seen a lot of his work. He was methodical about every movement Absolutely. in his fights. Yeah, or any, and, the, any, and the stances that the, the guys like I, I remember well. you I think it was I think you told me TJ one time a story about Kurosawa like working with a dude for like three days on his stance because well it, it was didn't... one day but basically it was just an extra and uh, it was an extra who was supposed to be, do a samurai walk across the scene uh-huh. and Kurosawa you know um, he didn't like the way the guy was walking and literally spent the day coaching him and on how to walk. Sure. And, you know, a lot of people obviously would have just been like, all right, this guy's not working out. Get someone else. So, but he even if he spent even the if time, Kurosawa, to, you know, like yeah, even if Kurosawa guy. wasn't himself like a world class uh, swordsman or a martial artist, he had a passing familiarity with those things. Yeah. Carlin, on the other hand, would have brought a way more street thing to it. Like if Carlin oh, yeah. was breaking into shit and kind of like running with a gang of toughs and stuff in New York. He's going to have a way more dirty style of fighting. They're on top of a fucking skyscraper. I don't really know. I, I don't know if I can make an argument for Kurosawa in this one, guys. I mean, I how just. Big, how, how big were, was George Carlin? How big was Kurosawa? <laughs> All right. I'm going to look up their heights here. Okay. I mean, are they say of the same size as Carlin? Yeah, let's see if they're generally Carlin. about the same size or what. So I mean, George Carlin struck me as kind of uh, a Kura shorter, Kurosawa was dude. actually so pretty Kurosawa. Uh, pretty tall for a Japanese guy, um, 5'11 and a half. 5'11, so okay. he's nearly that's six a, feet that, tall. That's actually really tall for a Japanese dude. Uh, so he's pretty tall. I mean, he's about six feet tall. That's not bad. Um, I think George is pretty tall too, though, isn't he? Well, I'm George not tall? sure. I think George might might not be that tall. We'll see. Uh, height. I mean, not that height matters in a. Not. You know, it doesn't super matter. I mean, he's about five nine. That's about average height for a man. That's, about the, that's close enough. They're not. I mean, there's no tremendous fucking size difference there. 
Uh, no, they're both no, nothing, nothing worth writing home to mama about. There's they're, definitely not like a super advantage. In they're being both a couple inches taller. skinnier dudes, at least if you're talking about, you know, if they're in their primes and stuff, which I think we should assume yeah. for us a, a fist fight or a fight on top of a skyscraper. Um, hmm. Unless you can find me some evidence that because I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like Kurosawa, I know for a fact it, that fucking George scrapped. I don't know that Kurosawa scrapped. Right. So. Or that Kurosawa, in his youth, attended some martial arts. Yeah, he had a bunch of training or something. Um, If if he was sword trained or some shit. I remember researching his life, and I do not really remember anything like that coming up, but I'm not saying it it didn't. Yeah, I was going back through the episode, because you, I think it did that episode that we did on him, and I don't remember you mentioning that he was in any martial arts classes or... No, no. Like, like he, he had an obsession with it culturally, but I don't know if he had... Uh, I don't... He, I'm, 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 I'm doing research. I'm not finding any evidence whatsoever that Kurosawa uh, was a martial artist himself. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't think of the edge of Carlin. I know that George... I mean, George Carlin, I know for a fact that he had a rough upbringing... I know that there was he some probably, violence. He probably fucking fought the cops a couple of times, fought other dudes. He definitely fought some Gun. other guys. I don't know. I'm thinking we're going to give this one to George. I think yeah. that he throws Kurosawa screaming off the edge of that building. I think so, too. I think we're all in agreement there. All right. So, Derek Jensen, Kurt Cobain, who will win? Who will prevail? Oh, Jesus. Uh, let me just get rid of this fucking... Um, I, don't, I guess I don't want to fucking do that just yet. Oh shit, TJ! Don't reveal your shit. Yeah, we. Just, I saw some of that. Oh shit. my god! It just keeps pulling up the same shit. Pull. There's so many things on Uh-oh. this list. Fuck you! God damn! It's damn, pissing me TJ. off at this point. This might be rigged. God might damn rigged. it! There's like a million things. It keeps pulling you know, the same the two fucking things. Intellectual debate, dude. That we got to go with that one. Ah, okay. But we already did it. I mean, I guess we, I guess fine. we, I guess we'd elected not to do it, but I'm still, I'm taking it off from here on out. So go ahead. All we right, can start talking fine. about that. Jensen I mean, versus Cobain, it, vigorous intellectual debate on something they would disagree with. You know them best, so you tell me what they disagree on. Uh, I don't think that they would disagree on much. I think that it would be radical environmentalism, and I think that uh, Derek Jensen would probably talk circles around Kurt Cobain. Like Kurt was not like. Derek Jensen's a, a student of philosophy and a student of rhetoric. And, he, you know, he's one of those dudes that's like honed his entire life making argument. Like, that's what he yeah. spent his time doing. Kurt, while he was very passionate about things and very political, uh, was not a dude that spent his time immersed in that shit. He was an artist and, you know, he wrote lyrics. And if this were a battle of like who could write a better poem or something, it goes to Kurt. You know what I mean? But we rolled intellectual debate on a topic they disagree on. And this dude, like Derek Jensen, literally spent a good portion of his life sitting in front of hostile college audiences that didn't want to hear that the green movement should go violent and try and convince these like liberal do gooder tree planters that maybe they ought to go bomb a dam and getting booed and getting fucked with by people. (laughs) Yeah, I really don't um, find any flaw in Paul's reasoning there. He also, he, he if this pushes if, if this pushes you any further, he also was the target of uh, feminist hate. He himself is a feminist, but he's a, uh, uh, I think this is the term, he's a turf. Gotcha. Trans- so he doesn't believe that men should feminist. be able to decide to be women and right. enter into and full womanhood and blah, 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 Which blah. Which Kurt Cobain and him might disagree on that, too. Sure. And and I think they probably would. Kurt Cobain was a queer activist, or at least a, he had, at the time, progressive uh, ideas on, you know, the acceptability of, of queerness. Um, but once again, Derek Jensen developed his life writing books that are basically arguments for his philosophy, which uh, rebut arguments from other philosophers. And then when he's not doing that, he's spending his time in front of audiences, making the argument, taking the heckles, responding to the questions. Kurt Cobain never lived a life like that. So I don't, I, I can't really see an argument that he could win this. He doesn't have yeah. the same credentials when it comes to debate. So, Dude, I can't yeah. believe Derek Jensen has gone as far as he has. It's kind well, of shocking. He, he lost he's before, but you know, he, he's in round three of the loser bracket. No, but, I thought, I, I mean, when, but yeah, he might, you know, he could have been eliminated by now. I was salty at the top of this because I thought Derek Jensen was just going to get eliminated, you know, ad hoc right at the beginning. Eh, so doesn't look like it. 
He's going all the way, baby. He's going all the it's gonna be, way. It's going to be me versus Derek Jensen in the final. I can feel it. <laughs> Shit, dude. Maybe. We'll see. All right. So, Fred Rogers versus Quentin Tarantino. A presidential election. That means both these guys are running for president. Who would win the election? Fred Rogers yeah. and Quentin Tarantino. That'd be an interesting presidential race. It would. Um, I like I you, mean, Quentin, just the way you are. I, dude, everybody loves Fred Rogers. He just goes in with this immediate fucking goodwill from every angle. Like the left loves him, the right loves him. He'd get a ton of votes. He certainly Some would. Some people hate Quentin Tarantino. You know, they think yeah. his movies are violent. They I've heard, I've heard people Christian. on like Fox News and shit say that, like, you know, Fred Rogers and his like everybody's special thing is like evil and ruined America and shit. So there's definitely sure. some hate Fred Rogers haters out there. there usually, there's some. Usually these like pull yourself up by your fucking bootstraps. You ain't shit. You don't matter. <laughs> Also, I mean, you can see Fred Rogers speaking to Congress and the eloquence and grace with which he uh, humanized children and humanized their needs growing up before that belied the fact that he could have gone down the road and been a politician himself. He spoke for the people. He was very humanist and very populist in that way. I think um, that, uh, you know, I think Quentin Tarantino would probably run on. So he, he, you know, he'd just be like, he'd come out there and be like, listen, I like I like Mr. Rogers, but he's a fucking pussy. Let's be real. Yeah, you yeah, need yeah, someone yeah, who can yeah. drop the fucking bombs. You know, he's going to kind of like I think he's going to kind of like try to paint Fred Rogers. He's like he's too much of a pussy to really be a, an effective president. I'm the guy who can fucking get shit done kind of thing. And I think yeah. that might resonate with somebody. But ultimately, I think Fred Rogers wins. Yeah, that election. I, I think Quentin Tarantino's arguments are going to fall on deaf ears and he's going to win like 10 or 15 percent of the vote. I think he's going to I think he would do better than that. Be, but. I also think there's going to be a significant portion of the population that is just kind of weirded out by Tarantino. I think you're right. So yeah. That's not a good thing. Fred Rogers just kind of radiates he has, acceptance. Fred Rogers is more of a, a, a politician. I think yeah. it's fair to say. Um, I think that uh, Quentin Tarantino would be able to dredge up, drum up more of the vote than you guys. Oh, I've been waiting for this one. I've wanted this stupid little goth kid's ass for fucking 20 years. <laughs> it's time. It's time to ball. face me, Paul. I'm gonna bust I heard you, the Paul. song you wrote about me. <laughs> All right. Fuck, dude. <laughs> I wanted the to fight this come. fucking little goth kid for so A long. A weightlifting competition. <laughs> weightlifting. So <laughs> what we have here... What we have here is one scrawny goth kid who probably can't lift shit, and then one fat, <laughs> depleted man who can't probably can't okay. lift shit. Paul, now, how much here, can you throw up? Let me, let me, I don't know. I, I, I will be dead honest with you. I do not know what I can bench. You know, I'm not a gym guy. Right. So I oh, I know. Have you ever I went to the, I went to the gym, but I wasn't trying to do max. I was doing, you know, reps of sm- slower weights and shit right. when I was in, doing the gym shit back in the day, but. Yeah, I don't know what I can throw up. I'm not I'm not claiming I can I'm not real super fucking defined. But here's the thing. I'm stronger than you would assume looking at me. Like I've helped people move my whole life. I've lifted some heavy fucking furniture. I can straight arm a lot of weight. Um I, I you know, I've lifted some heavy fucking shit. I used to have jobs that had me lifting heavy shit. So I think I could put up I some I am fucking going weight. to say that just because of your mass got more mass and that gives you a little bit more stability and i think you can also leverage your weight mm-hmm. in more ways manson's a little chubby but he's definitely not as fat as you like i'm fat as fuck and i'm not trying to say i'm strong i'm just saying that if you needed help moving and you had this big fucking armoire or some shit my gut tells me that you could probably lift i up could more than i Marilyn could two, i could two man it i could i could straight arm that fucking 800 pound armoire or so. whatever it is how dare you defeat me, Paul? I'm going to go do some cocaine now. All right. Poor Manson. Get so, out of here, Manson. Sorry, Manson. Paul advances. You're eliminated. All right. Oh, we're yeah, getting I'm down. I'm so glad he did not get oh, the last one. By Dude, the, if I got that one, I'd be so fucked. By the way, <laughs> I do want to mention that uh, when we get to the end, we are going to go all the way to the finalists, but whoever is the final two in this uh, in this competition, 
Mm-hmm. There will be a ver- my next episode will be a versus episode between those two personalities. Oh my fucking god! Oh, damn, TJ. So, so we're gonna. Ha- so it's really just. <laughs> and a- what, what's what comes after that? A versus episode? Yes. Look, dude. Okay, whatever. After that episode, I'm calling a moratorium on these fucking versus episodes for at least a week or two. No, you can't do it. You don't. You don't have the power. You don't have the authority. I will do as many versus episodes as I want. All right. Oh my! I got an idea God. for episode TJ versus Paul. Oh. Yeah, I'm just gonna put TJ versus a bunch of shit that he can't win from now on. I'm just gonna stop pulling TJ, the episode I was pulling. Dude, dude, Paul, just do TJ versus shit. Like TJ versus a dragon. <laughs> like what happens? Versus episode are low energy, low fucking uh, research required. Exactly. All right, so Arnold Schwarzenegger versus Scotty. Let's that's see. Why I'm, I was glad I did not get the weightlifting competition because, I mean, come on. That was Arnold. That's what he was known for. Drinking contest. We already done. Who would be who would be able to handle a more copious amount of drugs? Oh, fuck, dude. Um, I, you know what? I, dude, think Scotty, Arnold, I, I think Arnold would fucking do a lot more drugs yeah. than me. I, I was going to say. On. I mean, it's, he's I Arnold. <laughs> I mean, if Scotty, Scotty, if Scotty won't even what, defend you, himself, you can then. handle your business. But Arnold nah, Schwarzenegger dude, I, is probably I ain't fucking coming for Arnold control. when it comes to anything like that, man. If it'd been like, you know, <laughs> I don't know, fucking fixing computer problems or something, maybe yeah. I could beat Arnold. All right. It's time for Stephen King to face off against Slick Rick. Oh, uh, shit. What's it going to be? How are they going to do it? Write a famous novel. Who would have better luck at the roulette wheel? Mm. Oh, shit, dude. That's- okay, so Stephen King would be looking at the roulette, ru- roulette wheel and thinking of a uh, uh, a book, yeah, about a roulette wheel that drives a man crazy, that's sentient, that knows how to move the ball around, but nobody else knows it but this guy, and it drives him insane, and it won't ever let him win. Yep. Or like, and if- Slick Rick would be flanked by two gigantic breasted, gigantic ass bitches in bikinis holding martinis for him to take sips of draped in gold right yeah rings on every goddamn finger wearing a mink coat and a big top hat with an eye patch your, who do you think's going to do better at roulette that your night? visual I'm, your visual has stirred me scotty do you have a counter argument or do you agree with that? Because I'm I'm hmm. I'm siding with it unless you got a counter I mean look it's it's all down to chance but at the same time, like, who do you want to imagine winning? Do you want to imagine Slick Rick looking like a fucking boss with his fucking bitches and his fucking bling? Or Stephen King going, hmm, yeah, I'll bet, uh, I'll bet on zero this time. Nah, man, you want to think that Slick Rick's going to win it. All right. Go ahead, baby. You, you pick this time. George oh, Carlin. One again. George Carlin versus Derek Jensen. Oh, shit, dude. How will it go down? I can't, like once again. I can't even believe Jensen has made it this uh, this far. I mean, oh God, it, just, it loves to pick the same shit over and over again, doesn't it? It really does. A chili cook off. Oh, well, I can tell dude. you right now, Derek Jensen's going to lose this. Yeah, there's no way. He Why do you think so? Because he's. I mean, he's a vegetarian, isn't he? I'm 100 percent uh, sure he's a vegetarian. Yeah, he yeah. calls fish people, yeah. so I mean, like his chili's not going to be as good. George Collins going to put not, meat in it. Yeah, he's I, don't, win. I actually don't know. Let me see if I can find out. I actually don't out. know that Derek Jensen is okay. A I assume he is Jensen being I, kind of morally opposed. A lot of the ingredients of, of the chili to be right. So he's going to make some. He's going to make some horrible like supports it. But I don't know he, chili or I know Paul's really trying to push Derek Jensen to the next round. Well, no, no, because here's but, the thing: Derek Jensen is a huge proponent of um, indigenous tribes, gotcha. and Aboriginal tribes and how they live, and they live on meat. They take fish from the river and shit. Well, so let's see. If, let's I see. Know. I don't know. Well, let's see his. I guess we can. Maybe I'll be surprised on his opinion about meat. But I know he calls fish people and says that human rights should be expanded to animals. <laughs> I'm a pretty. I'd be pretty surprised. Okay. Uh, here's here's something directly okay. from his website, gotcha. a vlog called Vegans, and it starts with a sentence. Okay. Sometimes because I eat meat. That doesn't come from factory farms. Vegans have accused me of speciesism. Okay, so he eats meat. So he does eat. Okay, meat. he does okay. eat meat. So he. So it's fair, fair to say that he's selective. He, might, he, so does, he, might... he doesn't eat factory farm meat. But well, he eats I, I agree meat. with him on that. Okay, okay, I agree okay. with him on that. Uh, so fair enough. So maybe his chili. Maybe his. Maybe his. Maybe his chili would be all right then. 
No, and know. here's a, here's another thing. Derek yeah. Jensen is a huge pr- proponent of like home horticulture. So you think maybe he's like he keeps got his own garden. herbs and spices and shit. He keeps a garden. He keeps a, like a oh, little garden shit. at so his might, place he and might tends have some it. Fresh, uh, mm. fresh chilies. We're fresh talking peppers. about. He might grow his own beans for the chili. He might have some fresh chilies, some fresh peppers to throw oh, into this. Shit, because he's a proponent of returning to a simpler way of life. So you TJ, know he knows some cookery. Was 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 Carlin known for his cooking abilities? Anyway, Did I'm not sure. Look, I don't know if Derek Jensen is known for his cooking abilities. I mean, either, I, but but you know, Paul Paul's saying he has his fresh ingredients, but. Are we, are we going to say he's that not growing? Jensen, a, he's not growing a garden just to let it rot on the vine, right? Or no. give it, but you know what I mean. He's cooking. Well, but like I mean, this. he might have someone else cooking this for like, him. Okay, well, why don't we do this? Is this like a competition where they're both brought there? They're both given the same ingredients, and they have to just who can no. This better? is each are of them. This like is each of them bringing their prepare, fucking they bring own. It. They're bringing their own chili. So the fucking. Okay, I mean, that's how a chili well, cook-off works. Derek Jensen's got the benefit of his fucking garden, all that shit. Has Carlin ever been known? Like, no. Look, you can. Well, Carlin also eschewed processed food ingredients and stuff too. Well, that's, yeah, well, that's true. So, I mean, like, he no, was also no, into that eating. That means he's got, like, a sense of food. Right. So, I mean, like, he was particular about what he ate. I mean, he was a picky. He was known as, like, kind of a semi-picky eater. He didn't well, like let, processed let, let's foods. Let's say they can both get similar quality ingredients. So, I mean, let's like, they're both going to put an emphasis on quality ingredients if they're doing that shit. Okay. Well, fair enough. Though. So, we, we mm. can both say that. But what about, uh, does Carlin have any cooking things in his background? Does Jensen have anything? I where, don't like, know. He studied uh, cooking. I'm, or I'm trying to. I'm, I'm, I'm on trying something. to figure out if Carlin uh, had any cooking skills. Paul, you can look if Derek Jensen has any yeah, cooking I'm, skills. I'm looking. I'm trying to find some evidence that he cooks. I mean, I know he lives out in the middle of nowhere. So he's right. got to cook. I mean, fuck. Then he's got to be pretty at least decent right. at it. He, if he's making he his own shit. But does he, he live with like? The... Does he have a wife or does he have like a girlfriend or some kind of like harm um, of fucking? That's another good hippie question. bitches I don't know. or something. You know, because maybe he's I not actually, doing the cooking. I actually think Derek Jensen might be gay. Okay, so maybe does he have oh, a okay. fucking but boy I've toy that's out there in a fucking yeah. apron stirring the fucking? Chill? I mean, like I don't know. Does he know how to cook personally? We don't know that. Does his husband or life partner stir the chili? Hmm. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know that if I had time to go through all of his vlogs, let me just let me just do a run through of those. I'll find that. Yeah, yeah. And just see if he does any cooking vlogs or something like I don't watch every every video and sure. he's he's been doing it forever. Uh, to find him on Carlin. Um, I found some like little jokes about cooking, but nothing that fucking makes me think like, oh, he's cooking all the time. Nah, so I mean, neither of these guys. I mean, like, look, shit, dude. If Jerk Jensen's living off the fucking land kind of thing, he, if he's doing that... Uh, and but that doesn't necessarily make for a good fucking chili, though. The, I mean, not necessarily, but he might be more experienced. And usually a more experienced cook is going to make better food. Mm, maybe. I mean, George Carlin might have been the guy that was... Maybe he did it occasionally, but, you know, he was on the road a lot, too, dude. He didn't have much time to fucking... That is true. He was, he was a road All right, man. so I've gone to his vlog channel that he updates relatively recently uh, frequently and has for a long time and i searched for the terms cooking and food i got no hits for cooking and the food ones are all arguments you know that don't have anything to do with cooking so i right, cannot so- make a claim that Derek jensen can cook a fucking thing let me try and find out if he's got a girlfriend or something or if he's cooking for himself or a boyfriend or whatever. Sure, or a boyfriend. So I'm not able to really find anything about how George Carlin prepared his food or if he prepared his own food either. I found oh, a few man. little quotes about cooking, but I'm not able to really pr- you know, prove that he cooked. But neither of these guys really now, have I the do background. Know, I do know for a fact that he avoided processed foods and was very particular about what he put in his body. What's, uh, what's, uh, Jensen would be the same. Right, but so that, that kind of just puts him on an even keel on that. Um, I don't fucking know, man. I mean, unless they fucking make us a chili right now, I don't fucking... Uh, I don't know how you say it. Mm. Or how um, you decide it, rather, because, I mean... There's not any clear evidence in either direction. It's not like here's Derek Jensen's cooking vlog. Like this is how me making non factory farmed food. Uh, I can't find any evidence one way or the other. I don't know if he's single or has a partner or what. Gotcha. So I, I can't really use it in the argument then. So that it, it's just going to have to come down to gut. All right. So my gut feeling is George Carlin make a better chili. Why is that? Like explain. explain I don't know. I just reason. I just feel like you know. I just feel like something about that New Yorkness. I mean, New York is not a place that's known for its chili. I feel like it is. Number one. I feel like it no. is known it's for its known chili. For its, uh, cuisine, though. It's I not known a, for its chili in the same way like Texas sure, is or but something. It, but, but I mean, you don't hear a whole lot 
you know what I miss? A good bowl of New York chili. Or why doesn't <laughs> why isn't there a place that makes that good New York style chili? You don't hear that, the, you know. So yeah, but I, I, mean, I, 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 I don't know. I feel growing up, Derrick Jensen making. I feel like I do. Chili. I feel right. like you know you don't really hear about well, like well, a, a well, lot of hippies. Thing, I feel like I associate chili... New York with chili more than like I'm a hippie that lives in the woods with chili. No, yeah. me, hold on, let me let me let me make my fucking sure go ahead. Uh, case make, here because I think I think I think you're wrong about that. Chili started as a survival food. Mm-hmm. It started as a simple food that people that lived out in the wilderness could cobble together and make a bunch of, and it would feed a lot of people, mm-hmm. and you could use a lot of hearty vegetables, and you could just drop the meat. That's where that's why it exists. Derek Jensen lives kind of like almost off the grid, mm-hmm. out in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in California, in Northern California, up in the mountains. Um, you know what I mean? He has his own fucking garden and talks about that a lot. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I just feel like I, there's there's a good ch- I feel fall. like I, I think personally there's a good chance. Hold on. Okay. I think there's a good chance that a dude like Derek Jensen that believes in like simplifying things would might ha- and has his own fucking garden with peppers and shit in it might have a killer fucking chili. He might That's all I'm saying. He might. he might. You know what? I don't, know. I, don't, I don't buy this idea that just because George Carlin was from the Bronx, he has a chili either, because I ain't never heard one person before tonight <laughs> yeah, say, you know, oh, New York chili. You know, never fair, enough, fair enough. But you know what? I'll say this. It's, it's just going with your gut at this point. That's all we're going mm-hmm. with. We're not going. I'm not saying there's a rational basis for it. I, I think you guys just. I like George stop. Carlin better, so I'm going to go. I think with you George guys Carlin. just want to stop the meteoric rise of Derek <laughs> Jensen through this competition. Yeah, I do. And it sounds like you know what? You know what, Paul? Now you've challenged challenge us on this. Yeah, I definitely want to vote for Carlin. All right, now. that's fair enough, dude. Hey, if Derek Jensen goes down to skull duggery, it just Bloop. proved his fucking philosophy correct. Yeah, that's fine with me. Civilization can't fucking su- uh, Man, survive. You know what? Maybe he's right. I guess he probably right. is. No, I don't know. I just, I don't, my gut. Tells me that I'd rather eat the George Carlin show. Uh, I, I, you know, that's just biased probably because you like George Carlin better. I wish that there was a way for me to hit like a little remote and sit you down in front of George Carlin and he just serves you this like dog shit watery <laughs> chili. <laughs> I mean, he How might like this. TJ? You're just like sitting there and just eating it out of fucking respect because you don't want to look fucking, you know. <laughs> and me- meanwhile, I'm just sitting there looking at your like delicious, fresh garden herb chili you're, you're right. eating from Derek Jensen. I, uh, hey, and Paul, I'm sitting, this, I'm sitting in the next peppers? room with Derek Jensen and he's giving me my second helping of this like <laughs> fresh shit that he pulled out of his garden. It's all fucking spicy and great. You know, I, but you know, it could also be the opposite where I have of like course. a rich, meaty, hearty George Carlin chili and you're sitting there eating like a kelp and tofu it's, chili it's or true. some shit it's so I got, I got like a kelp and oyster chili that i'm choking down paul this is environmentally sustainable isn't that great yep yeah. Here's the thing, oh, God. you know, really, it's not, it's not even a matter of George Carlin for me. It's just like, I don't trust the cooking of hippies. I'll be honest with you. Like, I don't trust hip, like they eat yeah, nasty see, shit. Derek Jensen is, Derek Jensen's a violent hippie. Yeah, he's but still, he's still a hippie. He's a gun toting, still a damn hippie. Down, still a dirty up, tree hippie. hugger. He's, yeah, it's a little bit different. You know what I mean? Still a dirty tree yeah, hugger. I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. I, Fred Rogers, Paul, it's time for you to go up against Mr. Rogers. Are you gonna? I do not. I can I abs- can I just give it to him and drop out of the competition? I don't want to fight Mr. Rogers. No, let's see. Well, let's, no, let's, let's see. see what it is. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Who would be better to lead a rag t- a rag time? I meant rag tag. Well, fuck rag tag group of rebels against an evil imperial force. Paul. I think I would Paul, probably Paul would be better I think, at this. I would pick Paul. Yeah, I would pick Paul this is in so that sad. role. I'm so sorry. Mr. Oh, damn, Rogers. Paul. You have to beat one of your childhood heroes mercilessly. Well, look, Fred Rogers, we already agree, would be a better president, especially in like peacetime. But look, if you're fucking a group of rebels that's trying to throw, t- uh, you know, overturn the fucking apple cart yeah, you and need fucking defeat that the can empire. Make that fiery speech. Yeah, and, and that's, that's me. Pa- that's Paul. That ain't Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers is going to be like, we need to forgive the empire or some bullshit. So listen. No. What we need to make sure is is that no one hurts anybody. So lay down your guns, y'all, and we'll just lay here and make a human chain. Like, that would be Fred Rogers. And I'd be like, these fucking pigs have bled us for too long, boys. Time to take some meat off of their asses. You know, I'd be out, I'd be out there fucking leading the f- All charge. All right. We're almost done. Damn. We're I can't approaching. believe I fucking killed Fred you Rogers. You murdered Damn, Fred man. Rogers, Paul. You're a piece of shit. I don't feel good about that victory. Well. I really don't. It's but time. I don't dispute oh, it. Fuck, dude, I have to go up against next next round. I have to go up after this one. I have to go up against George Carlin. I guess you do. Oh, yes, you do. All right, fuck, Arnold dude. Schwarzenegger versus Slicky Ricky. Hey, it, hey, hey, Scotty. I got. I want to tell you something before we move on. What's At that? least we didn't tune out like fucking terrible TJ here. That's I true, know, right? Man. 
We're putting up a fight. We're still in this shit. All right, shit. so a sexual endurance marathon with 100 hookers. Oh, oh my God. Shit, Who can dude. outfuck the other? Slick, Rick, or Arnold? Now, these are two I, guys. This is a perfect one for these guys, right? It really is. Is. Look, these I guys are both this. known for fucking laying the pipe. Am I wrong? Yes. I mean, yeah, but I mean, you're going against Arnold, who you know got a ton of fucking uh, pussy back in the day and is yes. in amazing physical shape. Okay, let me break this down for you guys and see if you agree with me. Both of these dudes were swimming in pussy. Slick yes. Rick 100%. was a hundred percent an icon in his time. He was he was slaying puss. Same thing for Schwarzenegger. But there's one word in this fucking battle that I think decides it: sexual endurance. Right. And I think Slick Rick doesn't look like a dude that hits the gym all that often. I think that he would fuck about twenty or thirty of those hoes and be like, "All right, Slick Rick is done." And Arnold. I mean, he just like lifts cars for a living. He'd, yeah. he'd be on number 50 and be like, you know, if you want to start early number 51 and start sucking my balls, go ahead. Because I will be ready for you momentarily. I mean, yeah, dude, he was doing like HGH and steroids and all kinds of shit. Come on. I'm He's about fucking... to achieve my 50th <laughs> orgasm. I'm ready. Ah, okay. I'm ready. I am always 51. coming. I am coming. Yeah, I'm yeah, coming all the time. Yeah, I mean, come on, it's got to be Arnold. I mean, yeah, like Arnold like Slick Rick versus Arnold. Me, not only does us. he fuck, you know, his hundred, but then he fucks the uh, the seventy yeah. or so that Slick Rick left on right. the table. Slick Rick would fuck any of us under the table, but fuck not yeah, not Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> no, one of the few people I can say probably could beat him. Arnold moving through these categories. Damn, dude. Well, he's got he's got good fucking roles. Scotty versus George Carlin. Oh fuck, dude. Not a, a pistol of duel at dawn. A physical Ooh. duel at dawn. Pistol dude. duel. A pistol, a pistol duel. duel. Oh shit, dude! That means the like, classic, <laughs> you know, walk, you know, ten paces, the turn, Barry Linden. fire. Yeah. Nah, the Barry dude. Linden. I'm fucking. You know what? Uh, uh-uh. uh I'm riding out of town, dude. I can't fucking. I can't look because even if I win, I kill George Carlin. I can't do it, man. <laughs> that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. I am. I like the coward. I am. Flea town. I mean, <laughs> you are Scotty, so we have to take your word for it. You're saying you would not pistol duel, so you don't even want to <laughs> let it come down to pistol skill, which you might win because you don't want to kill. No, man, I'm, I, I'm like I might talk a big game going up into it, but then I'm playing town, man. I'm right, playing town because you don't want to be the dude that shot George. So you're I, Scotty. Well, I don't die. Is, I, one, I don't want to die. That's number one. But number two is if I win, I kill George you, Carlin. All would right, you well, bury Lind in it? Would you stand there I guess, and refuse, like, take the shot, but refuse to shoot at him? Fuck like at the no. end, of, I'd be, no. I'd be gone. I'd be the win. Gone. I mean, <laughs> I, I normally win. wouldn't allow that, but I guess, I guess, uh, I can't fucking put Scotty through if even he says he's not going to win it. So I mean, yeah, he is Scotty. We, like, there's no more authoritative source. Yeah, you know? I mean, I, I'm not going to argue nah, with Scotty dude, about a, a, any, Scotty, of, any so. of these heroes, but I admire. I'm, I'm probably not going to shoot at them. All right. Paul versus mm. Stephen King. Oh, boy. This is crazy. Watch me roll right. A riding. dick sucking contest. I win. Paul. <laughs> I win. Paul could suck All right. off Number Paul one, there's, God knows. There's, there's no evidence <laughs> that I remember that Stephen King is even bisexual. Right, he's or not. even the least bit gay. <laughs> yeah, he's been married yeah. for umpteen years to a woman. He, he and got no dick sucking skills. Had kids. He, he's he, no. Now I, I will be honest with you guys. I have never sucked a dick in my life. Have I've you never about it though. Oh, of course. Okay, well there you go. I mean, I don't think that's Stephen the King thing. Sent, like I know, about, you know, Paul. Would, the difference a, is Paul would actually relish it on some level. Yeah, Stephen yeah, yeah. King is. Yeah, I would actually, and, and, assuming it was somebody I was attracted to, I would enjoy the cock sucking. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Exactly. If Jude Law was in front of Paul, I mean, he'd be right. like, he'd be going to town. Right. He'd be, he'd be like passion there. Dude. King would just be right. like, uh, you know, Stephen he wouldn't. King, unless there's some evidence that you can supply that he's kinky or poly or bi or whatever the fuck. Nah, dude, um, Paul, I'm fine uh, calling it that you win the dick yep. sucking contest. <laughs> Sick. I never thought I'd be excited about right. that statement in my life. <laughs> so oh, that means I'm not even going to. Uh, there's no contest. You won the dick sucking contest. <laughs> Yay! All right. So it's time for Paul to go up against George Carlin then, because I guess we're not ready for uh, this yet. Wait, wait, Fuck, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Yeah. I got to fucking go. I got to do two. Yeah, you got to turn her up. Is this one to back. We're working hard, dude? We got, we're Arnold, hard. Arnold has to go up against the winner of twenty nine. We're just, only on twenty eight. I just so. sucked a bunch of dicks. Can I get five seconds? <clears throat> nope. Nah, man. You're right back right. into it. Right back right. into the fray. Into the fucking fray. Drunken barroom ball brawl between yourself and George Carlin. Oh shit, dude. 
this is okay. So we have to assume primes here. Yes. It's the, because he's dead. So yes. I'd beat the fuck out of him now. So obviously we have to assume he's primes. a fucking corpse now. So yeah. So him and his prime. And I guess you would be in whatever your prime was as well. Which, you know, as far as physical prime, like when I was most capable. Yeah, like what, when, what age would you say? And the least hobbled by all the fucking retarded work I've done was probably my early 20s. So 21, 22, 23 years all old. Right, Paul, and now be honest with this. What kind of drinker were you back in the day? Because I mean, you said you, heavy. Had, you were a heavy, heavy drinker. Heavy. How could you uh, handle my, yourself? Now, do you? Because some people can drink a lot, but do you kind of just collapse in? Or are you like gregarious? I will, I, I will be dead ass honest with you, and you can call my mom to confirm this. I was always uh, with her, the last person to pass out at the party. She and I were always awake at the end of the big, like, fucking knockdown drag out parties. We we were the last two awake, and we'd start cleaning up the house and shit right. and still be drinking. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, so <clears throat> I was, I, I, back in the day, because I drank so much, now is a different beast. You know, like I would not put faith in myself now, but I'm not in my prime now. In my prime of, of drinking, I, there, there's not many people I think that could have held a candle to me, honestly. Like I just have the genes for it and I drank so much. I was a daily drinker in my early 20s for probably like from 20 to about 26. Right. At least every other day I got drunk. So, you know. So if we're going to go at your prime or like 21, 22, around that time in his life, George Carlin would have been in the military, you know, uh, fresh from the which, streets. Like, honestly, those dudes drink pretty fucking heavy. Yeah. Yes. I mean, like, and, uh, so you know, I, I read George I Carlin's biography, so I know George Carlin was a drinker as well, at least but at that he, time like, in his what, life. Like, what, he had a I don't know. childhood, too, right? So right, I so, started drinking early. Yes. I started getting wasted at like 14, probably. And right. I'm I don't know that George Carlin. It. I don't know that George Carlin was a heavy, heavy drinker, but I know that he drank socially and went to bars and stuff when he was that age. I wasn't a heavy drinker until my 20s, uh, you know, but I drank all the way through my teens. But I mean, you have binge drinking to a lot of that. Binge I mean, you have a shit. definite size advantage. Yeah. Uh, but then again, you've al- you've always said that, you know, you're the parky men are not uh, are not really fighters either. Yeah. So. No, um, here's the thing. Uh, no, no, I- I'm not a good fighter. I'm, I'm not. I never try to portray myself as a dude that would be great in a stand up fight. Now, that sure. being said, <coughs> like. I'm a big guy and I could probably do some damage to somebody, especially especially if, if you're drunk and they're drunk and, and I'm drunk. drunk. Yeah. Um, and I've actually now I'm not going to claim to have been a direct real participant that was like super throwing punches, but I have been in the middle of actual bar brawls, right? Where I was trying to break it up and took shots because they <laughs> were at each other, right? <clears throat> I know what that's like. I know what it's like to be real drunk and to see one dude you really know about to fight some big dude you don't know and to want to get in the middle of that so that they don't kill each other. I mean, Carlin came from a rough background, though. So I mean, he, he, he so probably he's probably done the same. Crap. He's probably yeah. done. At, he's probably done at least the same. So this is tough, guys. This I got to be honest. Tough with you. thing, man. It really how, is. How tall is Carlin again? Uh, he was only five nine. Five nine. So Paul. I, I by, okay. So four inches. At this time of my life, I was six one, and I probably weighed two hundred and sixty pounds. Two hundred and sixty five pounds was not at my heaviest at this point. Not nowhere near it. I was not lean. But I was way more physically capable. I mean, you, uh, right now I weigh about 300 pounds. So you you just saw me, Scotty. You can imagine me at 300 as I look. Well, I'm a little more than 300, honestly. I'm like 310 right now. Mm-hmm. So me at 310, me at 260 is going to look a lot leaner. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I can't really I'm show you. I'm you recently is, 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 I mean, in Bellevue, when you lost all that weight, you were probably about two. 80 so i'm so gonna I'm say two, i was 280 in bellevue um yeah so i mean like know, i'm just gonna say that's, gut that's instinct tough. maybe i'm just like sizest or something but i just always put i'm i always put the advantage on the bigger dude i mean i mean like as, as, i know that that's not always how it shakes ball. out but i mean like like parky obviously uh a lot of irish i mean but carlin was irish too wasn't he yeah he, well um yeah yeah he was irish yes uh, i mean it, damn that's, dude that's you guys are so hard. We you come guys are from fucking so similar in that background. Like, I feel yeah. like you both handle your liquor really fucking well. But I think I just think Paul tougher, that size. Like, he had a tougher upbringing than I did. Like, I wasn't a street fighter and shit. But that doesn't have anything to do with drinking. I mean, and he brawling. and he's uh, you know, he's just not as big as you. I mean, like, he's a skinny guy. Yeah, I think Paul just fucking uses that size and just like fucking falls on Carl, and that's pretty much it. I could see it happening. 
<laughs> so, I'm at, I mean, look, I, I love Carlin, but I mean, Paul's got that. As much as I, I mean, want, to, as much as I want to advance and I, drunk, that's just no way. There's no I, way you're. Gonna, it, yeah, I really want to advance Carlin, and I really want Paul to lose, but I think Paul has to win. Sorry, guys. No, I mean it. it Sorry, is, George. It's, a, it's the fucking roll of the fucking. Or they. Yeah, all right, the, and so I'm Paul, in this motherfucker, you, you gotta keep, keep in this. You gotta keep going. I'm gonna because uh, oh, slick you, Rick. It's to, this is to decide who's gonna face Arnold. Will Wait it be a, a rematch? I have to fight again. Yeah, so you gotta I'm fight. In the, uh, I'm in. Yeah, the dude, you're gonna get slick finals. Rick, dude. Yeah, you are. Oh, you're shit. in the loser think... finals with slick Rick. Fuck, man, three in a row. Yeah, sorry about that. You can only send one to convince the president that aliens have invaded the Earth. Which one would do a better job? Slick Rick. I win again. Not slick no, Rick. No, I'm dude. sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I win again. Slick Rick. No, I'm, I'm going Slick Rick. Slick Rick is a rapper. He he's going to show up in with a with a uh, diamond eye patch on with a hundred pounds of jewels and ten rings. And he's going to go, Yo, man, I need you to listen right here, man. There's aliens invading, and I'm going to be, you know, I, I can do. I'm an actor. I can do a little bit better job than that. There's no way. There's, All right, like, you know, I, I got. If, I, look, I'm I not trying to. Like but wait a God, minute, man. wait a minute. If, but Trump is I, president right now. Diplomacy is not my forte. Diplomacy is not Slick Rick's floor of uh, a forte. But speaking is one of the things I do. I'm saying Slick Rick, dude, and I'll tell you why, Paul. Right. When it's so yeah. it's so bad in America. It's mm -hmm. so bad in America that a guy like Slick Rick has to go to like President Trump. Being a black dude from the fucking streets and shit, he has to go to fucking Trump and be conv convince him. Trump's gonna be like, "What the fuck, dude? It's gotten right. so bad. This is the fucking guy they're sending to me." And like Paul, like Paul's gonna look at you and just be like, "Get this fuck! Who, what? Who, how'd this guy get in here? How'd this homeless man get in this fucking office?" And they they're fucking I mean, gonna drag you out. I just feel like I feel like Trump would be more likely to listen to Slick Rick. I don't know if it's this. I don't even really think like, you know what you're successful. I, I don't like even that about you. I don't even yeah. Like I think that Trump would be impressed with the bling. And the eye patch, and you know, I just see Trump liking would, Slick Rick better I'm than I like. Rick. Paul. I'm sorry, Paul. I think I will, I will, I will if Obama was president, I think I, I, Paul would win. Hear but out. hear okay, me out. Go ahead. I'll hear you hear out. out. Hear me out. Like I, I'm a pretty. I don't like uh, being overly like complimentary of myself gotcha. in real life. Like I, you know, I know what my strengths and weaknesses are. Right. Sure. And. One of my strengths is being able, like, I'm kind of a chameleon. And you guys know this. You've traveled with me enough to know anybody that walks up, I can go talk to them. Right. You've seen me do it, TJ, a billion fucking times out in public with me. Yeah. Any kind of person, homeless dude, fucking well to do businessman says something to me. I know how to, like, I can read people psychologically in a conversation and kind of. All right. Well, okay. All right, all right. Well, then let me. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Hold on. No, let hold me finish. On. Let me finish. Hold on. Let me finish. I'm almost done, TJ. No, no, no. I want. I have. I want you to prove it. I want you to fucking put your money about this. Pretend I'm okay. Donald Trump. You're coming to me. Okay. You're gonna convince me. Give me somebody else. <laughs> well, no. Trump's the president, so. Right, because, but we How? can't have Slick Rick here. It's unfair. It's unfair. <laughs> A burf. How's it unfair? Rick, Rick can't come here and prove the same thing. So if you guys make nah, your decision dude, off of that, it, look, if it was any other president, I'd probably fucking pick Paul. But because it's, it's President Trump, I'm picking Slick Rick. Paul, you right. made a compelling argument. I believe you. Right. I, I take you at your word. But honestly, dude, if I'm gonna send anybody to fucking convince Trump, I'm sending Slick Rick. All right. Hey, it might be the right fucking choice. <laughs> now, if it was uh, Obama, you know I'd pick. I'd pick you. I think sure. Obama could see reason. But I don't think Trump's going to see reason. I think we need a fucking the black a black dude with a bunch of bling telling him like this is how it is, Trump. What if this doesn't come out until Biden's president? Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't I'm know. Kidding. It'll, be, uh, it'll be out before. No, nah, it'll be out way before then. If, uh, if, if, if Biden won, be president. <laughs> yeah, if Biden won, then you know I don't think it matters who we send because you know, it's like he's not going to fucking understand what's going on anyway. Yeah, if Biden well, wins, we might as well know, just send a squirrel. If I got a fall, I don't know. Let me think. Dude, I did a fucking. I I made a charge. Well, hold on. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm considering your argument at this point because I have yeah. seen you be adaptable in social situations, and you've seen me handle tough business things and tough like conversations with people yeah. in a very adept way. I grew up. Uh, Let me go uh, ahead and because uh, I know you, but I don't know Slick yeah. Rick as well. Let me see if I can find you know, Slick Rick in an and, interview. And here's here's another part of my argument. You know okay. what Trump likes? That authoritative thing. Yeah. Where somebody comes and goes and Mr. President, I'm not going to bullshit you. These are the numbers. There are aliens hmm. invading. They're invading right now. And if you don't mobilize, sir, if you no, no, I won't say if you don't, sir, if you mobilize the Air Force right now, you will be a hero, sir. <laughs> 
You will be an absolute hero, sir, to these people, but you need to do it now, sir. And I don't mean to be direct with you, but I am the top authority in this, sir. I would not lead you astray. This nope. Is, nope. The, is the decision, sir, that will make the people in this country nope. love you forever. I'll tell you why not. Because Trump's going to well, sing you out for about two seconds and go like, who is this loser? You know, like it, no, uh, I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up in costume. I'm going to show up in like four star right, general. Gear. Hold on. I want to hear. I want to hear Slick Rick talk. So I know what I'm dealing with. Here. I don't know. Okay. Man. okay. I don't know if I can be convinced, man. I'm, I'm All right, Scotty, shut up. Shut up. One second. Because that's not Slick know, Rick. That's um, some bitch. You want you want the you want a, a status. So once you get past that status thing, once you get past all those, what you know, you're not seeing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Then you go, then you just take all, you just run like this, like a, like a horse, like you running it now. You know what I mean? All right. I'm going to send Paul. No, I'm saying Thank slick you. Rick, dude. I'm That's sending fine. Paul. I'm sorry. For my, I vote for myself you as well. You want to fucking send fucking Paul, TJ, I just the fucking fate of humanity is hanging in the balance. All right, man. I just don't think that slick Rick could even convey the information based on I what I just would, saw. I think you would convey it better. He's not a talker. And Trump is like, Trump is dazzled by oh. big talk. Like he likes big self aggrandizing right. talk. So finals. Arnold Schwarzenegger versus Paul. Let's see who wins. That, that, that's a weird this is a weird one. I is am going down to fucking Yes, yeah. this is the final. Am I in the fucking finals against Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, Holy I'm not gonna shit. do an episode of you versus Arnold though. I'm probably I'm gonna I don't know, you kinda ruined my plan because I didn't think any of us were getting to the finals, but whatever. I guess TJ, I'll figure something TJ. else out. TJ. Yes. TJ. Before you move on, before you roll. Yes. Before you roll, stop. Yes, stopping. If you shirk your responsibility to do a, a video of Paul's ego versus Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah, what the fuck, TJ? What I will provide. I that. will provide you with any questions you want about my childhood, my upbringing, the things that I've done in my life. You all just right. don't want to do it, TJ. You don't want to. Fine. All right. I'll eye. fucking. I'll, I'll do it. Jesus Christ! You just were you complaining promise. about too many you verses. Promise. episodes. All right. I'll you do made it. A fucking promise. You were just bitching and about me doing too many of these. Or I whatever. I lo- let's see this one. All right. A pie eating contest. Oh, dude. Now, wait a minute. Uh, now, wait a Paul minute. We are the champions. Paul now, wait a minute. No. Hold on, Paul. Paul, Paul I have Paul's beaten both lose. of you in eating competitions. You would There's not no- beat Arnold, dude. He was fucking a bodybuilder. Yeah, I mean, like, if we're talking... I didn't say him out. He burns an insane yeah, I mean, like, of calories. I'm he would- a country boy. No. I would put my face first in that you- pie. Not so- even close. Not even close. All right, fair enough. Look, I got to give it to Let's do. You know I high rolled that. You know I high rolled that. I'm a big fat uh, fuck, and I can eat a lot of pie. You you could. No, I don't. I don't doubt that. Stephen King, I would say I I would pick you, but Arnold, dude, Arnold used to eat a fucking. Arnold Schwarzenegger is like a fucking eating machine, though. I mean, that dude fucking can eat like crazy, especially in our our prime. In his prime. In Arnold's prime, he was All still right, eating. So I gotta face you. Arnold in his prime because if I'm facing Arnold now, I decimate him. Yeah, you might you might beat him. him now. I won't I won't deny that. But there's let's... no reason that I'm not that <clears throat> far away in age, and he's in way better shape than I am at the age he is. There's no reason to go to the fucking prime thing for this. Me as I sit here right now versus Arnold <laughs> I'm, Schwarzenegger. I'm not say that, dude. Arnold's versus pretty Arnold ripped Schwarzenegger again. Schwarzenegger in his fucking hot tub with a cigar, looking all flabby all right, and old hold on. and shit. Let's do some research. Right now, he's, not flabby. he's not flabby now, dude. He was You're right. Maybe. He's back in shape. I dude, know. Arnold's back in shape, Paul. I don't know, Paul. I don't think you win, dude. I'm hold sorry. on. Let's see. Hold <laughs> on. Think, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Good, hold on. Hold on. Let's fucking do some research here. Mm. Okay. Let's go ahead. And do right, some let's research. research. We, Paul already knows how he eats, so we don't need to research no, no. Paul. I want you guys to remember my mom. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, that's true. Your mom is almost the, like a the fucking competitive you never coach. Stop. Hold, hold on, TJ. Yeah. The way you literally never stopped getting offered giant plates of food, even as you were walking out the door, you were given bags of Skittles, chips, and big giant plates of her food. I mean, so are I a grew, lot of other people in America. I know, I you, you did. But like you're talking about eight, someone that you I have to eat more five plates at, at at fucking Thanksgiving at my mom's the house. Thing is, is that this guy has to fucking eat was eating more just because like for just physical per- like getting as big as possible. I understand. So I, I mean, like I, I know that body eater, uh, body body eaters, body, eaters, whoa, whoa, body whoa. eaters. <laughs> I know that bodybuilders eat an absurd amount of food. Right. I will. I will say that. Okay. So. <laughs> I do know that Arnold would deviate from, uh, you know, he would cheat and go like eat a bunch of diner food or something. But here was what he would eat at a typical day. Okay. Uh, I guess that, I don't know if this is during his prime or whatever. This is, I guess, when he's built bodybuilding. So he'd have meal one, breakfast, eggs, bacon, and toast. I don't know what, in what quantity. 
Meal two, mid-morning snack, protein shake, nuts, fat-free Greek yogurt. Meal three, lunch and pre-workout meal, high in carbs, uh, fish, brown rice, one cup vegetables, workout. Meal four, post-workout meal slash dinner, chicken, sweet potatoes, one cup of vegetables. Uh, meal five, pre-bed recovery snack, cottage cheese, fruit, protein shake. So I can, t- I can tell you this. As it's presented and assuming that it's like a normal portion and not like he eats four whole chickens or something when they right. say chicken. Yeah. Assuming it's like a normal, healthy, recommended portion, I could maintain that diet in perpetuity. I'd have no problem eating that much food. I don't think I'd have so much of a problem eating proved, that much food. You've proved nothing. No, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd have much problem eating that. But I do know that there were instances where Arnold would go and like just eat a fucking entire fact, pie at a that's diner what I'll or do. something. I'll go back to this episode and I'll just read that diet and I will maintain that diet in perpetuity and just that'll be my weight loss thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> what I'm just telling you, there was nothing there that I couldn't, I could eat all that food in a day and <laughs> still probably cap it off with a big bowl of ice cream or something at night. You know, I just don't think, I don't, I don't think Paul was eating more than a guy that was like 280 pounds. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, like, I might, of muscle. I, I might, I hold know. on. I, I myself, so. towards the end of the time that I lived with my mom at 16 and 17, was pushing 280 pounds. Of <coughs> muscle? Of fat, because I'm, I ate, <laughs> I ate, did nothing but eat all day, is my argument for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that you're, you're fat, but you don't think, it doesn't yeah. take as much to get fat as you're All right, hold thing. on, hold on, hold on. Here's, here's a specific thing about Arnold Schwarzenegger you, eating you've pie. You've seen the fucking household I grew up in and how my mother cooks and how she pushes food. I ate. Yeah, plate. I mean, you, you ate a lot. My, you ate a lot. My, dinner, my dinners, my average dinner as a kid growing up living with my mom. But even that, two, it, this, this is a pie on, eating two, contest with a lot of right, shit going on. It's a pie on. eating contest, but let me. Okay, so I here's. Mean, let me read, let me read an Arnold quote here. Hold on. Two plates. All right, Arnold Two quote. plates with my right. average dinner at my mom's house. Two Shh. heaping plates of whatever Everybody, my mom made for dinner quiet. was my this, average I have plate. a pertinent thing. You here. tap out, Paul. So here's it sounds a little better than. Uh, it's a pertinent yeah, thing. Yeah, my post workout uh, cool down <coughs> snack is pertinent. some yogurt and my uh, Hold on. Ch- uh, I eat a chicken and broccoli. So uh, this is uh, Arnold um, doing an interview here. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What normally happened with the pies was we would be dieting down before a competition and we would go splurge. We were depriving ourselves every day and eventually Franco and I would snap and we'd end up at the House of Pies in Santa Monica. We would each eat a whole pie and then people would be shocked that we looked better the next day. I talked to men's fitness about this and apparently it is a trend now. Uh, we okay. were just going to go insane without that, the pie. That, I, could, I could eat two whole pies right now. I mean, like eating a whole pie is not that big a deal for right. a fat dude. I could sit down with a key lime pie right now on a fork. You give me 20 minutes and it's gone. Okay. Easy peasy. So it's not a feat. So every once in a while, you? he'd sit down and eat a whole pie. Guess what? Me too. But he's just casually eating a pie. He's casually eating it. Like he could probably fucking do I don't way know more you, than that. That's just like, have his, you ever like just, what eight. did I do? Formally eat it? I've done it. I've sat down with like a whole pudding <laughs> pie or a whole fucking little Oreo cream pie and, and, and just ate the whole a thing. fork and eaten it. Okay. What did I do? Did I do that ceremoniously? I, I did it casually. I don't know. I've never fucking eaten an entire pie before. So I've, to me, I've it's an, it's, I'm, I don't know the territory before. of fucking. Right. Well, that's I what I'm a, saying. A pie, pie contest pretty, is eating it formally. I'm talking about I like, I mean, like, you I mean, just like, for pleasure I mean, eat an entire fucking lie, pie. But I, th- I think of push to the limit. I've, if I had to bet on somebody, I mean, look, Arnold's just done a lot more fucking crazy shit in his life. I think he could beat you. I participated you. in pie eating contests. I think, like, I think uh, Arnold would beat you. 90s, I did one at the I think you do better than any of us, though. I think you do better than us. I could, I could even see it being close, but I don't think I, think hey, I, I got that, further so. on that hot dog than either of you guys. So you guys have yet to prove you guys have yet to find one piece of evidence that Arnold was eating like a fucking half a cow a day or something, he, which I would. Well, the well, point is, he that, could. I concede. He was eating half a cow. So if someone has, the, the standard is <laughs> yeah, he eats half guys, a cow. Like, he, he read his well, fucking you, daily regimen and it was like, but that's I eat a chicken shape. breast that's and broccoli. I mean, that's still five. Eggs. I mean, it's still five meals a day. It's pretty I mean, fucking. Yeah, yeah. He's it's healthy food. And broccoli but, and well, cottage some of those, cheese and yogurt. How many calories is that, though? You have to, so you have to factor in. That's how many calories? 7,000 calories I have calories no idea how many calories. I don't think Paul was putting away 7,000 calories a day. If you, you, if you, you must be joking me. Living with my mom, I wasn't eating 7,000 calories? Probably not. I mean, you're probably in like more like four or five, dude. I don't know. Yeah, maybe when fucking uh, uh, he was bulking for a competition I mean, or something, he was eating 7,000 calories. I don't think his maintenance diet was 7,000 calories. Apparently, yeah, that's think, what you heard apparently, his, apparently Arnold's right, friends was, called him the garbage disposal because of his voracious and indiscriminate appetite. So. Who did? 
His friends. His friends. When Arnold Schwarzenegger was younger, friends called him My the dad garbage. Dad used to disposal. call me garbage gut because I would fucking <laughs> right. sit and eat all next. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I I'm just day. saying. Um, I mean, well, Paul, no one has to convince you. We just have to vote. I mean, if TJ wants to vote with you, well, then I'm you can still, vote I'm you. on the fence. I'm trying to, I'm doing I'm fa- saying, fatty like, versus yeah, muscly show me some on evidence, this. I, show me some evidence that he was a prodigious eater or something. Like, as if, if this was I mean, Andre the Giant I was up against, I would already concede and we'd be done with the well, show. You'd be silly to argue him. I mean, he's da, just da, da, fucking da, da, a massive I'm, human being. I'm, I'm trying to figure more about this. Any evidence that Arnold could out eat me? I well, okay, look, if we're going to, I mean, like, are we doing prime or are we doing today? Because that's the factor, too, because right now I it think, says I, Arnold Schwarzenegger is fair to do today. Well, if we're doing today, I then I'd say you win like, because you, there's, I mean, like, know, today was, he eats oatmeal and fucking vegetables. I mean, and yeah, shit. I, I mean, mean Arnold's you know. not going to fucking eat pie. So I don't right. know. Right. And, and he's and, and I overeat I, a lot. I mean, I'm going to be honest Paul, with you. I'm can't just shift the ground. Oh, well, now we'll do this. Now we'll do that. Like he shifted back and forth. You guys have pretty much used prime for everything. So I'm sticking with prime. All right. All right. So, well, fair enough. I was an overeater in my prime. So we're talking about so the I'm prime saying, of Paul's like, fatness versus. Paul, you probably ate, I, I'm sure right. you ate more back in the day than you eat now. I don't know I mean, why. Th- why is this one so fucking contentious? I don't really get it. But uh, anyway, so, so the prime of Paul being fat, which is about 280, right? Or something like that? Or is it fat? Oh, I'm fatter, fatter than, that? than that now. How fat are you now? So you're in your prime I'm, already on fatness then. Oh, so no, uh, my, my prime and fat, the, the well, heaviest your prime I ever eating, weighed, I guess. The, what, the what was your I most voracious was eating? 360 pounds. Okay. What was your most voracious eating phase? 360 that, pounds. Right. So yeah. is that when you were eating the was most? A, I was, I was about 30 years old. Okay. So. so Paul at 30 and then Arnold was what? 280. When he was uh, oh, how old? You could argue that that was probably Arnold's prime. He, he was probably in his yeah. prime in his thirties, and I probably was there. Okay, so we're gonna put you guys in your thirties then. So okay. we know that Arnold Schwarzenegger will sit down and eat a fucking pie. We know that he fucking was like a garbage disposal, according to his friends. But then we know Paul was fucking a garbage disposal as well. The same thing about Paul. And yep. he, we know that Paul would also sit down and eat an entire let, pie. Let me, let me say this, Paul: the most hungry I've ever been in my life ever was when I was going to the gym and lifting weights and doing all that shit. That's when I came, like when I would fucking just devour food, like give me uh, two plates of that. Give me four plates of that. You guys remember I did like a, like three or four months of solid, like every other day, gym, hard gym workouts. And I remember how hungry I got, but, um, it wasn't the hungriest I'd ever been. And you just didn't, well, I mean like, Hey, Scotty, you you don't really have much, you don't really have as much experience with just like, I'm not going to say you don't have any, but you don't have as much experience with just raw, like gluttonous well, eating. Either. I have, I overate every day. You overeat once in a while. And you could pack it away, Scotty. I overate every day of my life for a very long time of my life. I'm not denying you, would, you wouldn't do well. I mean, the amount of food, mm. hold on. I'm just, I'm just telling you, dude, this is not braggadocio or whatever. The amount of food in my prime, especially you kind of fucked yourself with the prime thing. Cause now I'm kind of a bitch. I got a Chipotle burrito the other day and I couldn't even finish it. Oh shit! I'm just like, oh, I'm too full. But I'm telling you, too you kind of fuck, you, you kind of fucked yourself with this no, one because in, I my, fuck in myself, Paul, I don't think I my, fucked anything. Hold on, in my prime. <laughs> oh, you're saying I, I fucked myself? But hold on, okay, yeah, I like how that works. To, hold on, you don't get to be six one, three hundred and eighty pounds of nothing but blubber, and you're not overeating by a massive it depends on how long amount. that time it took you to do that and you said you were about 260 all right paul, paul. Then, so well hold on here gradually why don't you why don't you tell us why don't you describe like an average day at that time of your life now don't exaggerate i know you're prone to exaggeration so try uh-huh. to restrain yourself but tell us like a general way like what would you eat during like at, a day at, at the height of your overeating <laughs> at, Just 380? That, at the height of your overeating when, or, or, or sorry at 360 when i was at when i was 360 pounds because that's what I topped out at. That's the heaviest weight I've ever been was 360 pounds. Okay. And it was right around when I was 30 years old. Okay. So if you're talking about what was I eating during that day, here's here's one of the main reasons I'm fat. I'm going to tell you, my breakfast is going to blow your mind. Nothing. Right. Nothing for breakfast. My lunch was a, if I ate lunch, which sometimes I would skip lunch, honestly, but if I ate lunch when I was 380 pounds, it would be something from a fast food joint. Right. Like a, one of their big ones, though. Like I always got like the uh, XXL grilled stuffed burrito mm-hmm. um, or the, you know, uh, triple Whopper. I, I loved the triple Whopper back in the day. Um, I used to go to fucking Jack in the Box at this point for a lunch and I would get um, the sourdough jack, but I would tell him add an extra sandwich, and I would get like a five piece nugget, and that would be my lunch gotcha. with the fries. 
Yeah. And, and like I, I large, of course. So like the liter of Coke or whatever the fuck they gave you with it. Right. Um, okay. And that was like my lunch. If you had lunch though, you said sometimes if I had lunch. lunch, sometimes I would <laughs> skip lunch and then you can just assume that what I'm about to tell you about dinner is even more retarded. Right. So for dinner, I would just eat a, a trough of whatever the fuck. Like sometimes I would cook at home and like, if I cooked a big pan of lasagna, it wasn't like I would have leftovers for a couple of days. Like my ex-wife would eat a square of lasagna and I would eat the rest of the pan of lasagna. Right. So basically <laughs> towards the beginning of the day, no eating whatsoever, but then at night right. you just like binge eat then, a tremendous hold on. quantity. Yeah. And if we're talking about at this point in time, then here's what would happen. My ex-wife would go to bed because she had to get up earlier for work than I did. And once she went to bed, sometimes I'd stay up late because I'm a night owl. And I would say, I'm going to give you guys an average because I'm not going to claim I did it every day, but I would say four times a week. And I think that's defensible. And it was probably more than that on a lot of weeks. About two in the morning, I would drive to Jack in the Box. This was a ritual for a very long time for me. I would drive to Jack in the Box. And I would get a sourdough combo. I would get six Jack in the Box tacos. So the dollar combo where you get two tacos for a buck or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I would get six of those. Six six tacos. I would get... Um, I'm trying to think of what the other side I used to add was because my, my order, I haven't lived near a fucking Jack in the box that I'll go to in so long. So we're talking about, uh, where, where, what are we at now? We're at the, the, uh, sourdough Jack meal, large, of course, with the giant fries, right? And the six tacos and the six tacos. That's about it. I think, I think sometimes I would add the, um, you ever get an egg roll hoppers or egg rolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not 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 really the egg rolls all that often. I would add the poppers every once in a while. Okay, if I was real hungry, but that would <laughs> usually mean that I ate. So you were more of a night binger. So yeah. let me just ask you this: so that that's that uh, you that's fair to say that's your normal your pattern for a day of eating. Mm -hmm. Well, at, at, his, at, at his at his yeah. height, may, and I was may, working. I, may I notice? May may we notice that TJ? Yeah, that those time periods seem to be quite far apart. What time and we periods? are talking? In fact, talking about a pie eating contest happening in the here and now no 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 no, sir you argued for in our prime and no, said that you well, i'm saying the here and now like is a fact of the fact that they are going to compete at a, one time period paul doesn't have a limited amount of time to compete in the pie eating contest right, right. Does Paul have all day but he said he would, have, well he said he would eat a pretty fucking copious amount at dinner and then eat another pretty copious dinner. amount but, at but like a 2 a.m contention. my contention is look if you want to snack. maybe more gluttonous all day more pies in a day maybe i could give it to paul but That's at one time, kind of I think point. I think Paul I think Paul would tap. I think Paul would tap, and it would just that, that, that's how it would go. I think right, Paul right, would right, right. I don't know how you right, right. hearing that new story. Approach, new you, approach, new approach. That's one hundred percent true. I, I believe you, but it's a long period of time that you did that, and we're talking about you're not having a pieing contest all day. I mean, it was really two giant really on, on a normal day at five p.m. and stopped at two p.m. It's not all day. It's all day, Paul. Two a.m. You mean? I worked all day. But hold on. So that's how that's how I that's how I wasn't four hundred eighty pounds. Hold on, hold on. Because I work, I was on my feet twelve hours okay, a day, and so the twelve hours a day I'm just I wasn't gonna, on my feet. I was stuffing my face. You're so, stuffing your face. Hold on, hold on. All right, here's I'm our here's how, here's how here's how this is gonna be. <laughs> I know. Here's how I this is gonna be settled. Right. Here's how this is gonna be settled. I'm gonna close my eyes, and I'm going stupid. no. I don't, whatever. No, nah, this is it, so give lame. It to Arnold. I can see to Arnold. I, no, 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 I, I agree. I, I no, don't no, I want a decision. I'm I'm fucking conflicted on this. It's fine. I, I've seen no evidence that Arnold Schwarzenegger could out eat me, especially if we go at our prime. I think he would. Uh, I think he'd have eaten a ton of food. I mean, and, bodybuilders eat like crazy. His, I, mean, like, I mean, I don't know what what I, you, I don't know why you're saying there's no evidence. I mean, we're talking about a guy who oh literally. God, dude. There's plenty of evidence. We're talking about there's, there's a guy who was I mean, Paul, I mean, Paul, he was I mean, described by his friends as the garbage that, like, disposal. There's not even a competition there. Is that what you're saying? I mean, what are you saying? I'm saying that what it, I did. How, how, how would Arnold do next to you? If you think if you think you'd beat Arnold, that's fine. How 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 much would you beat him by? Would you beat him by three pies? I don't, I would you don't beat even him by... know how to quantify that. Well, that's why I'm doing. I am going to close my eyes. You say you're going to win. How would you win? Okay, so let me tell you something. I'll if you give me fuck. If I'll both you of you give me fucking five seconds to explain myself All here, right. I'll tell yeah, you. Go ahead. All right. What I told you guys about was my average day. I didn't tell you guys about my binge days. Where in addition to that, I would eat a second kind of dinner after dinner. 
where I'd go get some like freezer burritos or something at about midnight and cook a couple of those or eat a giant tub of ice cream and then decide, you know what? I should probably put some meat on my belly and then go get the Jack in the box or on the nights when I decided to add a shake to the, you see what I'm saying? All right. Hold yeah, on. I gave you guys I, my I, I, average day. Not my fair, fair. Okay. Hold on. Help. I, so I know how to figure you, this out. A lot. I know how to figure this out. I know how to figure this out. Okay. I know definitively how to do this. Oh. All right. So, Scotty, if you or I are going to sit down and eat a fucking snack, right? We're going to eat, we're going to splurge and eat something, eat a crazy fucking copious amount of food. So, let's say, how would you, what would you eat? Because Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he wanted to do that, would eat an entire pie. Just like that was what he went to. He went to the fucking house of pies, he ate a fucking pie. Mm hmm. And that, right. by the way, would so, be no problem for me then. And no, well, it, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a problem, now, but I could still do it. It easily. wasn't a problem for him then. <laughs> Paul, I mean, yeah, that was that yeah. was just him fucking fucking around. It wasn't him in a contest or something. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. If he can just eat a pie for fun, for like, fun, just like yeah, I, just, I feel like splurging. I mean, a whole pie. So if he does what, that for fun, how many pies could he eat if he was trying to eat as much pie as possible? Right. I'm gonna say probably two and a half, three, maybe. Mm -hmm. If not more, I mean, maybe. I'm saying I'm thinking I'm thinking three at my, at my prime. I could have eaten three pies and then probably eaten half of another one at least to beat him. If that's if you think he would max out. At oh, three, my I, God, I'm, Paul, Paul's like, I'm, oh, I'm just, I, I, I wasn't half more. Paul, I don't think you, you would have had the level sorry, of commitment. I, I don't dude, think you had a level of commitment, Paul. I don't think you would have. By eating nothing the day before, I would have been voracious going into all right, it. I'd so, Paul, pies. I think you would have done respectable, Paul. All right, Paul I, think, I think you would have edged you if, out. Do you, all right. So, Paul, I'm just going to ask you dead on. Do you mm -hmm. feel. Like you could eat more than three pies. Of course, he's going to say yes. You can't go by what Paul says. You have to make a determination. Based well, I'm on, I'm going to take right. his word for Scott, it. He's he the a expert. Real vested interest in me not winning this, and I don't blame him. I didn't expect <laughs> to go this far. I no, look. If, if, uh, look, Paul. Paul, 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 if you can, don't don't say vested interest. I'm going to call. I'm going to call you right now. I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you all right now. I'm going to call you all right now. That's not a vested interest. I think he eat more legitimately than you, Paul. If if I didn't, I would say you. If um, I want you to look, I want you to fucking search real deep inside and tell me for sure. Pull, pull me up a picture if, of just a general like lemon meringue pie. If you can, if you could tell me that you could, okay, I'll pull up a picture of a pie. I want you to look at pull it and consider its and dimensions. I don't want some oversized pie. You know what a standard right, pie is. All right, all right, all right. Fine. I'm doing Whatever it. Whatever kind of pie you want, a cherry pie. I am pulling up. I just wrote pie and I'm pulling up the first fucking picture. Is right, what I'm doing. Fair enough. Standard size apple pie, cherry pie. All right. So here's the pie, pie that comes up pie. when you search for a fucking pie. That's the first Come thing that up. comes up. God, stupid piece of shit. Hold on. It's being dumb. All right. I never. And I'll be dead honest with you, dude. Okay, I'm not hold on. I'm not no, trying no, to I... win this. I don't want to beat Arnold Schwarzenegger at anything. All right. I, I, no, 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 no. Let's just. So this is the pie. <laughs> All right. This pie is this? So Who's I want pie? you to consider when you're looking at this pie, I want you to consider the consistency of the crust, the density I've of the eaten filling. I've of these. My mom makes okay. these. My mom cool. is, is, actually makes really good pies. So I've let's say that this pie is, you know, like about a foot. Or maybe a little more, 13, 14 yeah. inches, maybe tops, 12 to 13, it's 14 inches. Enough. All right. Enough, it's, huh? a, it's a meal. It's a nice deep pie. One of these mm. will definitely, you know, you could probably eat half of this and be kind of like pleasantly okay. full uh, and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, you, you want, you're, 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 sure. you're in your prime. You're at your height of your gluttony. Mm -hmm. You sitting down to eat three, eat these pies. Now, okay. now remember, your eyes can be bigger than your stomach. So realistically, yeah. I want you to tell me, do you think that you could have sat down and in one mm. sitting, mm -hmm. eaten more than three of these pies. Because I put Arnold Schwarzenegger in the fucking category. In the heat of a competition, right. everything and it has else to be going fast. on. Nerves and all that. You know, right. It's not just Paul in the kitchen doing it. Yes. Okay, so right. you know, factor that stuff in. Do you feel that you could fucking do it? That you could fucking eat more okay. than three of these? Because I'm putting Arnold at about three. Okay. So um, I'm not going to give you an immediate answer. I'm going to try and be as thorough as possible and walk through this logically so that I'm actually making an <laughs> argument for whatever I decide. I'm going to tell you guys a little quick story. Uh, at Thanksgiving, you can imagine you guys have both eaten in my mother's house. She goes yes. ape shit. Yes, of course. I and there's that. pies. There's pies coming out of fucking ass. Sure. Every kind. Totally makes sense. So one of my favorite things to do, and especially when I was around my peak, was because I'd always go to my mom's house. And, uh, you know, the family would come over and everybody would stuff themselves and I'd help her kind of clean up a little bit. And then there would be uh, at the end, she would give me a bunch of food to take home with myself. And I always loved when she offered me a pie. 
because my favorite ritual when I was at this kind of 360, 365, maybe even peak was to take on Thanksgiving was to take one of these pies home and just drench it, the top of it in vanilla ice cream to like what would amount to like half a fucking thing of vanilla ice cream, right? Like a pint, yeah. half a pint of vanilla ice cream. And then put it in the microwave and like let the ice cream kind of melt into the. I love taking an apple pie and doing this. Yeah, and I would and I would do that. I would take like the half a half of some vanilla ice cream that we had, half a pint, and I'd put it on top of it, and I would sit down and I would just like casually, with a fork, eat the whole fucking thing. And it wouldn't take me like hours to do it. I would sit and just eat the whole apple pie with the ice cream melted down through it. Right. And that was not, and I wasn't like, at the end of that, I wasn't like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my. Because I did. And I'm telling you, this is on Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm. This is on a day where I was at my mom's house eating turkey and fucking mashed potatoes by the eight pounds all day. I would go home (laughs) at the night with a whole apple pie and eat half a pint of ice cream melted over it. Right. Do I think I could eat three of these? Absolutely. Oh, so. Easily. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. How long were you? Uh, Three hundred sixty-five pounds, roughly. For I would say I weighed that much for probably three years. About th- and did you ever go any higher? That was like that's where you topped out. That is about the heaviest I ever remember seeing on a scale. Now keep in mind, I'm not a guy that weighs himself a lot. Well, sure. So but would you say I that- gone higher? But when you like uh, when you checked in, the highest you ever saw consistently was around 365 pounds. The highest I've ever stepped on the scale and seen was like just over 360 pounds. Okay, pushing so, 365. Maybe, so yes. TJ, I, I've calculated uh, using Paul's uh, height BMI, and his so. weight at the time and his age. Mm-hmm. Right, and this is saying he's active. Uh, Paul, I would say you're. you're I was. You, at this you time, I are low active. Would you say I was? I was not sedentary. Like when I was home, I was, but I was working a job that was physical at this point. Like I was carrying a lot of shit at work, walking we'll say, all day. We'll say low active, low so active, so low mid active. I would say honestly, so to maintain that weight. Yeah, TJ. Yeah, I present this to you. Paul would have needed to have eaten, and this is, I think, this is to be totally transparent. According to this scale here on this some active dot com scale, four thousand four hundred and forty nine calories per day. That's, so that's crazy. Probably, so Paul, that's so pretty pa- crazy. That's where Paul was about topping out. Because I mean, if he would have done more than that, he would have. <laughs> so he would have every day further. to maintain that. Yeah. So about so, forty five hundred. So we're talking about about a forty five hundred calorie mm-hmm. day. I, th- that doesn't shock me at all. I eat fast food almost every day. Right. In mass amounts. So yeah. So uh, uh, interestingly enough, if you do pretty much what Arnold's diet was, he was eating about this amount of food. So they were they uh, honestly were about evenly matched. I can imagine. It. But I think Arnold has a little bit more perseverance. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I think you guys would be close, but I think Arnold I mean, would have that. You do more have like, to factor ah! in. I guess you do have to factor in the competitive spirit too. I don't think you'd beat him based on like he's right. going to give up. I well, don't, Scotty, I got to tell you, no, um, no animosity, man. I respect your decision, <laughs> and you, you may be right. Now, TJ, yeah, it rests on you because you're yeah, you're an you, actual man. you're an actual fatty. Yeah. You've been huge. Like, I know. I, I know. know. Look, I've been three sixty as well. I've been obviously. I'm a little taller, but, but you're taller than me. So you've well, I don't. I, I think I was. I was, I was like three fifty. I don't think I ever got to three sixty. But I was. I was close. You were heavy. You can imagine. I was big. <laughs> I'm still big. I mean, I'm probably at three twenty, three thirty right now. So, yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm in the same boat. I'm. I'm at like three ten right now. <sighs> I'm. I'm definitely not. I'm not skinny right now. So, um, no, me uh, well, I'm not gonna complain about my weight. Seeing as you guys blow me out of the fucking water. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, look, so I have I'm of two minds about this. I think that Paul probably <laughs> ate more than Arnold on a typical day. But I also know that Arnold Schwarzenegger has a competitive spirit, but I really don't see Arnold being able to get past a three pie barrier. And Paul, if his story is true, which I don't have any reason to, to doubt it is, I think he could get past that three pie barrier, especially if we're talking oh, about dude, Thanksgiving. Think, oh, before man, then. I think you're way underselling Arnold in that fucking center. I think Paul would do well, but I think Look, Paul I, would before get Paul by even like, before Paul I, think Paul. I don't think Paul would be yeah. beat by a fucking landslide, dude. I think Paul would get beaten by like a fucking maybe even a bite. Well, or two. I think it'd be closer. Paul's trying to make it seem like he blow Arnold out. I don't because think here's he would, the thing. Here, but, hold on, TJ. I'm sorry yes, to interrupt you, but here's ahead. the thing. If this is a pie eating contest and I'm about to go head to head with Arnold Schwarzenegger, yes. I'm going to prep myself. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to starve myself the day before. And then the day of, I'm going to get up and I'm going to eat a big breakfast, a bunch of bacon and shit to get the fucking digestives going and open the stomach up. 
I would blow three pies out of the fucking water by fucking <laughs> whatever, nighttime. dude. By dinner All right. time. So I am going. Time, I'm going to take Paul's word for it. I'm going to give it to Paul. Yeah, dude. This is a fucking. This is a shit show. But that's fine. Wait a minute. I totally disagree Ooh. with that. Oh, wait a minute. They're supposed to fight again. I thought this was the final. Oh, I have oh to shit, be dude. No, no, this oh, is, this is shit, dude. Because I came from the losers bracket, oh, I shit. have to beat him two rounds consecutively to claim oh, the victory. Oh, okay, yeah, fuck. And a, and a fucking thing where TJ decides with fatness, dude. You guys are All right, well, it looks like you might have a fucking uh, a I mean, game, of game of chess. Depends on this chess. A game of chess. Ch- okay, all right, so I'm, wait. Arnold. I don't know. Is Does Paul, can you play chess? Yes. Okay, are you good at chess? No. Okay. <laughs> I played a lot of chess with my dad. My dad taught me to cheat, uh, play chess when I was about eight years old. To, I was cheat. Obsessed. to cheat, Paul? To cheat, yeah. He did actually teach me some moves <laughs> that you could pull. But no, um, Let me see my if- dad taught me chess when I was about eight, and I played till I was about 10 or 11 with him pretty routinely. He taught me a lot about chess. So I know the board. I know the moves. I know some basic strategy. Am I good at chess? No. Uh, okay, I don't so play a whole lot of chess. let's see if Arnold Schwarzenegger plays chess. Hold okay. on. Yeah, let's let's see if he um, can... Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> spoke of his passion for chess at the opening of the Arnold Chess Classic games in Johannesburg, South Africa. I started when I was eight with my father. I had to play with him every day. Oh my god! <laughs> when I went to America, <laughs> I started sorry, playing Paul. over there with friends and people. It's the same at the story. Gym. He said he started at eight with his dad. We played <laughs> it every was day. Always okay, part keep of me. Going. All right, hold on. Um, known as an iconic actor and former, he does have a chess tournament named after him, but I don't think that's probably just because he's that famous. That doesn't mean he can play it. Uh, he's a celebrity. Blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to, the Arnold Chess Classic was a rapid blitz tournament with some of the strongest players in the continent. Do, 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 do. But why is he a good, is he a good chess player? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. The tournament. That's great. Uh, chess and esports. Uh, Schwarzenegger. Met Grover at the t- sponsors. He played a demonstration game against eight-year-old local champion um, Prane K- Kovonder. Did he win that game though? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, during the event, the yeah, I mean the kid's a prodigy. So he's a trust. Yeah. During the event, the prodigy, actor from Terminator win. and other classic films admitted doing some preparation on his tablet. I get beaten <laughs> all the time. Of course, the machines are stronger than we are. Okay. Uh. The Arnold Classic went viral. Blah, 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 blah. I, I do play like single player chess from time to time. Um, like okay. not, I haven't in a long time. I won't lie to you and tell you it's so, something I do all the time. But uh, I've been known to like go to wherever the online one is. You I mean, can Arnold play definitely enjoys chess, but I mean, that's, that doesn't mean he's doing it all the time. Okay, uh, right. He's got a lot of philanthropy money to throw around. Yeah, you know? so I mean, I'm not going to necessarily I have, say I have, I have fond memories of playing chess with my dad around the same age as Arnold. And if I was a billionaire like Arnold was, I might throw some money at a chess <laughs> organization. Doesn't mean I can play, you know. Um. So I, he is here. He is playing chess against Gary Kasparov. Okay. Yeah. Put uh, uh, cams off. Cams so, off for you know. a second. Let's see. Yeah, I want to see like the speed that he plays at, and I'll be d- dead honest with you guys if I think I could match it. All right, so hold on. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't tell you anything about the speed. It just kind of shows what moves well, the, happen. I just want to see him play. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to see, see the moves play. that he makes. Well, it's and just shit. it shows the picture. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to recreate the game. It doesn't actually Got have it. like video or whatever. So who who's uh, Arnold's black? Arnold's black. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll watch his strategy and I'll tell you if I think I know enough about chess to recreate. So Kasparov, I mean, like this is this looks like a short game. So I'm pretty sure Kasparov wins. Uh, pretty quickly, uh yes, it looks like. Um, of course, he's a fucking Russian okay. chess champion. Right? So. Yeah, he's one of the greatest in the world, if not the greatest in the world, I believe. So, yes. um, well, one of one of the great. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So Arnold he's, puts out there. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's a pretty common opener strategy from Arnold. Yeah, there. I mean it's very common. Yeah. It's like one of the first, you know. Okay, putting Both the bishop in play early gives you some. Both of them have put the their bishop in play. And he easily just takes a pawn for free, and he's trying to do some rinky-dink shit with the bishop, but, um, I mean, there's a number of ways oh, you can shit. counter that. He's kind of wow, like Kasparov, daring him. Kasparov already take yeah. queen there. He's kind of he's like daring him to trade, 
and he's using a pawn. Anytime a pawn takes a piece, that's a fucking win. And you see that that pawn on the right uh, hand side of the board has killed two major units now. So I mean, it's really eaten the board. So Kasparov gave up his queen, but sacrifice queen, queen, which is pretty fucking simple to do at this point. It's not a big deal. Now it's a check because he's well, he just well, he just got a check. What do you got, checkmate? So, yeah, <laughs> where yeah. where is it at? I don't see right it. here. Oh, <clears throat> hold on. Fuck. That's a mate. I believe so. Um. Uh. Yeah. 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 It is. It's mate. It's right mate. There. There's nothing he can do. Fuck, okay. dude. Fair enough. There's nothing he can put in front of it. Yep. There he can't That's do mate. a. He can't do a. So, he can't um, castle. Yeah, I think I could play chess at the level of fucking Arnold. Which, uh, if this is indicative, I mean, of Kasparov his, is probably gonna just dis- yeah, yeah, dispense I mean, with I, I, I mean, honestly, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's playing against Kasparov, but if this is indicative of Arnold's um average game of chess, then yeah, I could match him in chess. God damn it. Why does it have to be so close? Like his strategy sucked. It was horrible. It was like the beginner fucking put the uh, um, bishop in play and, I mean, and used it to threaten the fucking other side of the board early and hope the guy panics. And, you know, because they uh, beginner chess players do. Once your bishop like- is over on the other side of the board, beginner chess players start trying to take it and shit. And it opens the board up to a bunch of rook play and a bunch of fucking you know, hard sacrifices on your side. Yeah, um, we just, know, we you, just don't know how, uh, I mean, based on that one game, obviously Arnold looks like he, he played like good. a new kid. He played like I would play. He played with yeah, he like an average person would play. Uh, like a so, dude that used to play with his dad. I don't, yeah, I don't think there's any sort of Smith. edge that we can really give Paul or Arnold in this because we don't, I mean, like, there's no like Paul, you know, was in chess club for fucking 10 years. Like, oh, no, you know, four years. I mean, you know, he it sounds like both of them play some chess. chess a lot, uh, but I, but could I play chess at the level that black played it in that game that we just watched? Absolutely. It was horrible. It's beginner chess. He played. That's why, that's why Kasparov won. in like, what was it? Eight moves. It was six not moves. very many moves. It was, yeah, it, was not, yeah. it was a few moves. I mean, it was like, a, <laughs> it, was, it was a completely horrible, <laughs> you know, could I do side. that? Yeah. Um. Uh. TJ, do you want to fucking try to settle this category? Or do you want to try a different one? I feel I like know. it's. This I feel like it's pretty... too much of a draw. You want to? You want to give yeah. it a tie and? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's a tie. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm like, gonna say like... that's a tie, and we're gonna do a tiebreaker. <laughs> Jesus. Who would last longer in a zombie apocalypse? We already did. All right, that. I can see. Uh, okay. No, Arnold, we already. We already, did, we already did that one though. Yeah, we did. Uh, we already did that one. WW wrestling match. I mean. Arnold's okay, we haven't playing. done that okay, one. Well, right. okay. Hold well, wait on a now. minute. Well, it is fake though, so I mean, I don't know. So here, yeah, here's here's the thing. Now, I'm not going to make a super big argument for myself here. Obviously, Arnold has the better physique. But back when I was a fan of wrestling, George the Animal Steel was a big heel. And he was a big, fat, hairy dude like me. He had my kind of body. Yeah. And I'm not claiming that. But we're assuming that I trained as a wrestler. We're not assuming I just got dropped into it. You know, he got to train as a wrestler. Yeah, t- well, TJ, you're the one that did it. What do you, what do you mean by W? I mean, like, they're having a just... Paul and <laughs> I mean, look, I'm, in the arena. I mean that it's a WWE match, which means the outcome is predetermined. So, right. So I'm a good actor. I'm not a great actor, but you guys have seen me do some kayfabe shit. Now you I have, also, if we're doing prime was like, kind of like, um, Farley was in his prime. We, we described him as like fat, le- fat athletic. I used to do a lot of stage combat and stage falls and shit. And hit. I knew. I know how to do that shit. I I could do like the fat guy cartwheel. I think, like I think Paul like would a, be like a mid carder. Arnold would probably be like a like to, uh, the, pretty much the top of the cards. So I think Paul would get a decent match, like a Kevin Owens kind of match. But I think that he would still drop. But it. if they if they did it right, if if I was a heel like mankind level kind of heel. Yeah, but Paul might cheat in the to win the match. You know, right? Like he might fucking then, do and a then, chair and then shot set or up something. a rematch at fucking WrestleMania, WrestleMania or some shit. Arnold wins. They did that with the heel a lot, and I would definitely oh, be. Shit. Oh shit. All right, well, well, let's we pause wait. the combo. We got to wait for a minute. Pause the combo because we can't decide while he's gone because then he'll come back and it'll be over for this us. This is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> but this is actually tougher than I think to just call for Arnold because it doesn't really matter that his physique is better than mine in this. Like this comes down to like what kind of storyline would be being pushed in the WWE and like because you got to admit it would create like a crazy pop in the audience for me to beat Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, if I cheated and threw sand in his eye or some shit. Oh yeah. And there's nothing about that. I couldn't do. I've done stage combat. Wait, you Hello. Oh shit. Okay. I think Scotty right before he dropped was about to fucking rip me a new asshole. <laughs> Is he back? He's back. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Scotty. Sorry, uh, we 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 tried to hold the conversation because while while we saw you dropped, so shit, dude. So you're Vince McMahon. Th- How are you going to book this? Uh, I mean, 
It just depends on the the matchup. Just any match. I mean, this one's really <laughs> open ended. You know. I right. mean, if Paul if Paul's saying that like he, uh, it just depends on who who is the fucking heel and who, if, I mean, just because I mean Arnold could be either one. I mean, so, neither could Paul. I mean, Paul, I mean I'm going to imagine that Arnold is going to be the uh, the face and Paul is going to be the heel. Yeah, because I don't think I could pull off the face. I really don't think I could be a face in the WWE, but I think I would actually, especially in my prime, if I trained as a wrestler, which I got to believe you got to assume I mean, we're allowed, he, both of us are allowed to <laughs> do before this match. We're not and going in there. Then more, no likely, experience. Then, yeah, more than likely, I mean, if we're going to say this, like, look, I mean, are we talking that, about the it, first it, match? Someone's going to get a pin, pin, like a like a pinfall match where someone is actually going to win. I, I I would imagine Arnold would probably right, would so be let me ask, and build more like a, a Cena kind of figure. So I don't think he would lose to Paul. Right, but, but you know, I mean, are you going? But if he did, it'd be a disqualification or something. Are you going? Or Paul if, would take a chair. So let's say Paul's a wrestler and Arnold's a wrestler. They're both about the same height. I think Arnold maybe a like an inch. <laughs> what kind of heel do you think I would be? So I have always, there's really I've a always question identified of, <laughs> here. I'll tell you the, the rest well, of I identify. Most yeah. Okay. With. Go ahead. George, the animal steel uh-huh. and okay. Mick Foley when he was mankind. Right. Those have always been my two favorite, like stylistically wrestlers. And I had similar body types to them. Right. Which is probably why yeah. one of the reasons, you right. Which them. is why I liked them. They looked like me in the ring. So, now I'm not saying I could be as crazy as fucking Mick Foley. Mick Foley did some crazy shit. Yeah, right. But I am saying that like that was my that would be the inspiration for my character. So the real question I feel like to determine this for me is one, what kind of heel is Paul playing? Two, are they trying to build up a larger match between the two of them to build up okay. heat? Or so assume. So I mean, like if Paul get, is just like a thug wrestler that is just like on the mid card, they're just gonna feed him to Arnold. Right. On a fucking, you that's know, what, on a typical what, night what, to be I, like, you look, know. dude, in order for this to be fair, I think that we have to assume that we're coming at this where I'm going to I'm established as a wrestler that has beaten people. I may not be liked, but I'm a big heel. Right. And because it's not fair otherwise. Face. Yeah. You could just say, oh, Paul's just a jobber. Right. Well, oh, OK, uh, that, well, then not... I lose. automatically. <laughs> that, that's bullshit. So I, <laughs> no one said you were a jobber. They said you're a mid. But no, totally I'm, I'm wondering. Well, I'm wondering if you I are get what you mean. But I mean, like, would <laughs> look if Paul was a wrestler, if Paul's life had gone it, it, different, would he be a jobber or would he be, you know, I think Paul I has enough wrestler. charisma and enough of a mic skill. That they'd think... probably push him up. The rank to at least the mid card. card. That's where I think Paul would be. At. So I mean, like, there's a good chance uh, that if 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 Paul was in the mid card and he was going up against like a major face, there's a good chance that to build heat for a future match, they would have him win by DQ, or they'd have him win through some sort of nefarious, you know, scheme kind of thing. So uh, get, let me let me say one more thing, and then I'll let you guys hash this out because I don't got much more to say about it. It's really speculative, obviously. I mean, sure, yeah, of course. but but going back, and I'm not trying to repeat myself here. To if you look at the type of heels that my two favorite wrestlers were so george the animal steel you guys may not be real familiar with him because he was an old-timey wrestler and i know, and I know george not part of the attitude you guys know who he is obviously I know but george, i used yeah. to watch i actually got to see him wrestle in person a bunch of times he was the type of heel so he not, stylistically he was animal like he was the animal for a reason he was like non-verbal right yeah he, was he would bite the like ring this, and all this stuff yeah like a beast of a man his big um gimmick was he would eat the turnbuckle yeah like at some point he would knock the opponent out and then he would go to the turnbuckle and tear it open with his teeth and eat a bunch of fluff out of it and then he would use that exposed oh he exposed the buckle that was his big finisher was like eat the turnbuckle and then sl- slam somebody's face into the exposed buckle right that type of heel the other dude that i really loved that i really identify with that i think i would probably use to, if I got to choose my own character, which I think we should give Arnold the same choice here. Sure, but, yeah, yeah. Would be Mick Foley as uh, Mankind, which was almost the same thing. He was almost, but he wasn't nonverbal, but he was weird and bestial. His finishing move was Socko, which didn't require any kind of fucking physical prowess at all. Really, yeah. You know what I mean? It's the mandible claw. Um, and he took, both of these dudes took down big names to build heat all the time. Right. Mankind famous matches against the Undertaker. You know, I don't know who right. they, I don't know who. Uh, George, George the Animal Steel went up. Against, his <laughs> his big rival was Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, who was everybody's favorite fucking wrestler oh, at the yeah. time. Especially that and WrestleMania. He, and George the Animal did. Steel would always cheat. He'd eat the turnbuckle and he'd knock Ricky out with the fucking turnbuckle, and then they'd fight at WrestleMania, and Ricky would beat George. Yeah, but I mean, is there any, any, an equal argument to be made that hey, this is the main event match where you drop or you lose? 
I mean, yeah, why I is it? I mean, so like, there's. No I mean, good, didn't didn't Mick Foley fucking slam uh, the Undertaker's uh, through the Spanish announce table one time? No, it was the other way around. <laughs> You don't remember that back in 1998 when the brother of Cain <laughs> yeah. threw uh, mankind. Yeah. I mean, look, dude, sometimes these kind of fucking heels get heat behind them and they win. But People want happen. them to win. Undertaker I mean, won that match, happen. though. But um, uh, I know. Yeah. But I'm just saying, sometimes they'll drop the strap to these guys, too. I mean, you can't, I think you yeah, can't I deny mean, that. You can't sure. deny that. Oh, no, I would never deny it. I wasn't going to. I was going to say TJ. Uh, mankind really- held the belt. And and George the animal this is an ill-conceived uh, one T- because T- it's kind of like uh, conceived what match he like, should have said like you know the well, main event of wrestlemania or something all right yeah, what match do you en- envision that this is is this a, like a monday night raw match all right is this a pay-per-view match or is this a main event like the you know i don't know match? that's that's up for us to fucking sit here and argue about i guess um, well you but it's your concept so when well, you, know you were what? conceiving you know what? this one this. what were you this. seeing this is the main mind? event this is the main event of this show so i think should, i think it should right. just be the main event all right, fine, fine, fair enough. So if it's a, right. if, but if it's the main event of this show and it's our show, why would we? Why would Paul lose? Right. Because if we're DFF and this is the main event of our show, someone why from, would we want the hometown yeah. boy to drop the strap tonight of yeah. all nights well, on saying, this big did, night? Are you saying that Paul is the champ? Paul does the mandible anal I'm, claw. I'm, I'm he shoves his hand I, up I, Arnold Schwarzenegger's look, ass, grabs his colon in such a way that Arnold fucking passes out they do a fucking 10 count with the arm arnold is defeated by the anal mandible claw <laughs> okay tj that <laughs> your sexual fantasy should not cre- creep into this but yeah it could go i can't help like it that. i can't help it i'm all boned up man what am no, I look, tell this you? is how i envision it he drops the strap to me in some minor event in a controversial match where i cheat and i've been lording it over him like you know Paul kind have strap now, bitch boy. And at WrestleMania, me keep, you know, and he's like, you know, he, he's doing the whole like, I'm coming to fucking get you. Listen, that strap is mine. And I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to kill you in the in the ring and take the strap. You know, he's the face and he's doing that. And everybody assumes at WrestleMania, he's going to get the strap. But they really like I, now. Look, sometimes he's going to get it. I've seen a lot of WrestleMania events, especially from the era uh, that the wrestlers that I'm into are from. I've seen a lot of WrestleMania events where, yeah, dude, the heel drops the strap at WrestleMania. That's a big event. But, dude, I've seen a lot of main events that, like, they get down to the end and they defy the expectations because they want to keep the heat going. So it's like they, they make it a match where it's like, the face almost wins, but then the heel comes up with some crazy fucking cheat right at the last second and throws a bunch of magic dust in his eyes and he's blinded and the ref wasn't looking because, you know, Paul's sidekick, you know, Mr. TJ was out there beating on a drum and the fucking, you know what I mean? And the ref, the ref, the ref was telling Mr. TJ to go away. And in that moment, Paul threw a handful of fucking fairy dust in, in Arnie's eyes and pinned him, you know, or whatever the fuck. It happened all the time at WrestleMania. So it's equally, like, it doesn't help us that it's the main event, honestly. Look, the fix is in. It's wrestling. It's all about the fix. Realistically, Arnold should win this, but because mm-hmm. I'm Vince McMahon, I say Paul wins. I mean, I'm not going to vote against myself at this this deep into the conversation, like this deep into the uh, competition. Paul is the greatest would be a champion fool. of all time. Scotty, maybe a dissenting voice, but Paul is the winner, y'all. Paul wins. <laughs> I mean, I, never like, this down. I beat. I beat Paul destroyed I mean, them like, all. He beat uh, under each- like the fucking most <laughs> suspicious of circumstances and TJ pretty much just throwing everything Paul's way. So, I mean, I guess, oh my God. I, I guess if you're going to have it done like that, you know what, Scott, you're just that- jealous because Paul fought his way through Nietzsche. He yeah, fought trace- his way through hold Schwarzenegger on, hold on, TJ, before. Hold on, wait, 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 stop, stop. The only one let's that Paul trace. conceded, and TJ, well, let's be honest, you and fucking Paul's fat and fat delusion land, like, oh, wh- wh- let's just go back and give Paul the skyscraper, too, because you know what? Paul probably could have kicked Arnold's ass because one time <laughs> he lifted a weight once. <laughs> give me a fucking break, dude. This is Paul like, def- I'm sorry, the last two, trace. the last two are beyond ridiculous. Maybe the fucking food thing, but oh my God, Paul would fucking, 
pa- Paul was basically <laughs> ascended to like the top heel status ever in WWE history to fucking pull this win. Paul off. destroyed so, like, Nietzsche. Excuse me for going like what Paul the fuck are you Arno- talking about? This is like then Arnold so stopped Paul dead in his tracks the right there. Fucking basically just run the show and just say, well, Paul There's wins. There's a gallop happening. Paul There's defeated Marilyn Manson. Paul, Paul defeated Fred Rogers. Paul defeated Stephen King. Paul so defeated George Carlin. I don't, I don't fault Paul, Paul defeated fault Slick Rick, and then he defeated Arnold Schwarzenegger twice in a row. For himself. Dude, TJ, I, I, I can you... No, Paul, I don't, I don't discredit Arnold. Paul's victory at any hand to Paul. It's a, it's a credit to him. The, the discredit and dishonor is done to TJ, because Paul should. that's what Paul should do. I feel as the TJ champion, I should be. I, I should be given a chance to give a champion's. I, I, that, that's <laughs> fair. That's fair. I'll totally listen to your speech, but I'm gonna say this: that TJ, how tastes Paul's pee pee? Paul Thank won, you. Scotty. I'm sorry. I'm that's sorry. Fine. No, I, I admit that. Look, reality is reality. Uh, now, Paul, you may have your speech. I'm not gonna hold you up any further. Thank you, Scotty. And I look. I understand. Defeat is a bitter flavor, and no one likes the taste of it. And sour grapes are certainly hard things to drink. But at the end of the day, in this oh, TJ, room yeah. full of men, TJ, is he going to your... be allowed to TJ, you interrupt your the champion's speech TJ, you in, per- your knees, in perpetuity? I-, I have one request to listen to the rest of the speech. I want TJ on his knees. I'm already on my knees. Fair enough. Get on your knees, Get on your PJ. knees, Get your knees I'm already on my knees. PJ. I'm already on my knees. The, superior, also, get, yeah, the on. homo novus. <laughs> Homo novus, TJ. I've been on my knees the whole time. TJ. Protesting for Black Rather Lives than Matter. spend an entire <laughs> speech filled with braggadocio, would you assist me in tracing this unlikely championship match by match? I already did that. <laughs> so that and I, well, you did it while Scotty was screaming over you and nobody heard it, TJ. Nobody All gave right. it the reverence that this... this Warriors it's rigged path. contest, dude. All right. rigged contest. Warriors path. All right, I'm going to go through. Rigged. This kind of okay. nothing. Well, he's just going to do it again. There's no point. I mean, it's not going to rigged. Scott, it's fucking rigged. Scotty, it's rigged. will you allow so. TJ? No, because it was to... rigged. Because I, I, I've come... Look, Paul, if it was legitimately done, it, it was I feel rigged. at this point that Scotty, who lost in which round? Round three? Uh, let's rigged. see. Where did Scotty... Scotty lost to George Carlin. <laughs> and, <laughs> he would like to deny and our fans before that, he a lost full to and complete I have to deny the fact of acceptance. That I must, because this is rigged. Yeah, if, you, if, you would, if you would continue to be a thorn in the side and you would deny the fans hearing from their champion, then, right, I I will, then I will make a video <laughs> and upload it Go to ahead. our channel later. Go ahead. Giving my speech, and I will ask that TJ join me to help me go through this unlikely championship and how it unfolded. I'm not, really I am the not doing that. I want to give Scotty. I'm not doing that. I want to. Yeah. I want to recap for the people. <laughs> you want to recap the unlikely well, story it, of a championship? Are you insulting tonight. the people? They just watched your victory, so why should it need to be recap for them? Shouldn't it be just? Should Edge I not Trevor? be able to insult be, the people? Shouldn't it be etched should forever not, in their memories? All Should right. I not be able to insult the people, Scotty? Did I not beat Friedrich Nietzsche? Oh, wow, Nietzsche? now you want to insult the people. Wow, Paul. Did I not beat Friedrich Nietzsche? <laughs> this is a coup. Did I not beat all, all right. the champion? Paul coup. Here's, the, here's how we're going to fucking settle this. <laughs> Paul, did, nothing settled. Paul versus it, 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 Scotty it in this. I won. Scotty's choice. <laughs> how are you going to face Paul, Scotty? <laughs> here's the competition. <clears throat> okay, Paul, are you ready? What? What are we? What are we doing here? It's, it's Scotty's choice. Yeah. What's Scott? What are we rolling on? Who's fighting who? You and Scotty are fighting now. And I'm not. No. I just, Scotty's I, choice. I just won the strap. I'm, <laughs> I'm home getting my dick sucked. You guys. You guys annoyed <laughs> me with your contentiousness. So ten now. Minutes ago, if this wasn't my show. All right. And let Scotty com- right, continue so, his here, 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 How's I it? I didn't agree to any here's match. My competition. I didn't agree to any uh, match. Paul, Paul, I did not oh, agree Paul to any match. Me. Paul fears me. You can fear. You can say I fear. He fears me. Oh look, it's my choice, Paul. Do you want to do it or not? You can say. Do you want to do it or not? Oh, because he knows he can't You gotta make a choice, Scotty. Scotty, how you face it? Fear. He knows he can't. what I fear. How you face it, Paul? Scotty. Here, okay, can't hold win. on. You can't win. What can't do you choose? Win. Here's it. what I fear. What do you I'll choose? Tell you what I fear. And, le- and I like, fear unless something. an acceptance of a challenge, unless your unless your speech leads to the next acceptance of a challenge, I don't want to hear it. If your if your if your tactic if your tactic, sir, is to gish gallop me to to the point I don't where I can never means, sir. I don't have an idea what you're talking about. I'm just I'm issuing you a challenge right here. Like the challenge has been issued. I'm responding to that challenge. Okay. Will you listen? Yeah, I'll listen. Or will you continue to talk? It depends on what you say. Okay. I do have a fear. You, uh, you actually nailed me. I am afraid. 
Scotty. It should be. I'm afraid that your giant ego, which for the last 10 minutes has occupied time and wasted time, frankly, uh, 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 with sour grapes and uh, retreadings of things <laughs> in your mind for the, for the fans uh, to not be able to hear from their champion. <coughs> <coughs> and now... <Sorry>. And now <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Well, I'll, I'll wait for you. No, no, your, your obstructionism is definitely no, one not, of your I'm points. Just, I got a cough. I have a cough. I'm sorry. When the facts of the matter, Scotty, are you dropped out in the third round. What? I'm sorry. What? You made it to the third round. I, because, I, Paul, I, did, I, did, I was true to myself, Paul. I was true to round. myself. I had to do what mm-hmm. I thought was right, and I just I couldn't, I couldn't kill George Carlin. I, I couldn't do that. it. I respect that. I couldn't do that. I respect that. Yeah, you, you, you shouldn't have uh, you shouldn't have gave up so easy, Scotty. <laughs> but I am afraid well, look, I didn't give up, TJ. I am afraid I that Scotty path. Go ahead, I'm afraid it. that Scotty's bruised ego is going to force me into some ridiculous, unagreed upon re rolling of my championship belt. This is not this does not affect not this does not affect Paul because not agree and will not participate. This does not affect your championship status. It's gonna be like it's fair. He's gonna pick something I can't do. This that he does can not do affect. Like, oh, I won the whole thing. When he, no, this no, does I'm not affect your championship. This does not affect your championship. Paul? This is a separate Paul? matter. Everybody's Paul's talking at once. Me. Like literally, this, this is, does not affect this, this your championship. Episode? This is a separate uh, matter. I am trying to get that out, but neither of you will shut the fuck up for one second. So, <laughs> oh Scotty, God. make your choice. Make your choice. I'm not doing it. I want to agree to it. You don't have to. You don't. He doesn't have to agree to it. I don't agree to it. He doesn't have to agree to it. It's a hype. I don't agree to put the strap up. It's a hype. Scotty's choice. There's no reason why I would. I just said it's not up. It's not up. The strap's not up. If Scotty wants to go against me, we do another one of these shows with a new list of names, and we see how how the dice fall, and maybe we face off, and maybe he beats me then. All right. But until that day. You know what? I'm TJ? the fucking champion of the universe. And you I'll would do the this. same, Scotty. Had you come out the winner, would you let me come up <coughs> and be like, roll it, TJ. Me and Scotty had to have my choice. <laughs> Fuck no, you wouldn't. <laughs> well, you know what? I will admit that. But here's the thing. I'm not in your uh, you're in uh like like I'm not in your shoes. If I was in your shoes, of course I would say that. But I'm if you were in my shoes, you'd say what I'm saying. Well, I'm saying the same exact thing. So, we must you know, be more alike the same than you thing, think. That you know what, Paul? This came up. This is this is the thing that's happened. And if you choose, you choose not to accept it, then that's fine. I can't force you into a competition. I'll see you on the battlefield next time. We'll I, do another I, one of these. No, I'll that, see you in fine. part two, Scotty. That's fine. That's fine. You have a fucking fair that's chance great. as anybody. That's, a, that's I'll great, see you Paul. in part two. But until then, the strap until is then, mine. I mean, Paul, look, Paul just doesn't want to face is me. Mine. That's fine. You know what? That's oh, fine. Oh, the strap Paul, is mine. It is. That's true. Right for oh, right now. We but need Paul, to give me a strap, TJ. Can we order me one? It should be a fucking. You can order your own if you want. Belt thing. Money in the bank thing, TJ. I should be able to challenge Paul whenever. Already. And you know what? Oh. It's right here, Paul. I'm cashing oh, in, TJ. Oh, here, man, here, here, it's cashed here. in, Paul. And up, Paul. Paul won't fuck. TJ, look at Paul. Won't fucking face me. Should I win by disqualification? Oh, it feels so good. Scott. Win by what? TJ, should TJ should not should the title be forfeited to the person that's not competing? Mm. Oh, no, all these rules all of a sudden. Shouldn't I be given a, a victory even <laughs> yes. though I dropped out in the Shouldn't third be. round? No, Scotty, sorry. I should be given a victory. Oh. I should be given Scotty, a victory sorry. right now. Uh, all right, all right, all right, 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 all right. Right, right now, I should be given a victory. I've been sitting here for be three hours and four minutes one. listening to this shit. <laughs> Enough. All right, fine. Episode fine. over, the end. Big fat fight.